Alrighty, I think the clock just chimed six. Time to start. But this time is Sunday evening, so it's going to be a little bit odd for some of the people across the world. This is going to be their work day, so I am sorry, I apologize, but couldn't be helped. Our uh, uncle passed away this this two weeks ago, actually. They had him, I guess, uh, ready for the funeral. We were trying to get the family in, and so it had to be delayed until uh, yesterday. And so we all went down to Colonial Beach, which is a beautiful community. Back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, it was the Mecca in Virginia for people to come from Washington. They would take a ferry boat down the river and unload 300 people, 300, 400 people. And they would either uh, move into uh, little houses that they were renting down there. Some of them had houses that they actually owned, and they would go down in the summertime. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, quite quite pretty. I did a short video that I uploaded just a couple of hours ago, if that long, and uh, kind of shows you a very quick little area, just the, just the beachy area of where we were uh, actually staying. We stayed at a motel that got completely gutted and renovated. It was actually very nice. I loved it, and I might go down there again just for fun. But anyway, so we are back now. It was a four hours, two down and two back up uh, through mostly local traffic. There's no way to get down there quickly. There is, but you really go around in a ginormous circle, and I didn't have the, uh, I wasn't in the mood to do that. So we decided to go the regular way that we know how. And uh, anyway, so now we are back, and... Recently, I uploaded a video, and I want to talk about this because it kind of like triggered a few people, and I don't know why. I really don't. Um, apparently, the platform, YouTube, that is, <clears throat> excuse me, boy, I got a really um, cruddy throat this weekend, so you'll have to cut me some slack. I'll be <clears throat> clearing it quite a bit. Anyway, so they are implementing something called premieres like a premiere, but plural. It's very simple, but a lot of people are misunderstanding what it is that that actually does for us, the creators. Normally, this is what I do normally, and for those of you who do not know, well, now you do know. What I've been doing is I create several videos, three, four, five videos in a row. I upload them after I edit and render them, create the thumbnails, I upload them all at once, except I set different release dates. And that is using the current scheduling tool, which allows you to um, have a video, for example, uh, be available Monday at 5 o'clock in the evening, my time. Now, you guys will not see any thumbnails, nothing, no hint, nothing that will then tell you that at 5 o'clock, say tomorrow, a video will be available from me. Now, that's the current way to do it. You can do it two ways. You can either schedule it unbeknownst to anyone. You will not see any kind of thumbnail pop up until 5 o'clock. Or I can do it manually. I can just upload it, let it process, enter all my metadata and all that good stuff for the uh, search engine to be optimized, and then just click save or publish and at that point once it, i click, click on publish whatever the time is that's when the video will be made available to you guys so what i'm trying to understand here and this is the complainers here is what is the difference between me uploading a video that comes to you to your um attention totally unannounced which is what's happening now totally unannounced it's whenever I upload it, whenever I decide to hit publish. I may upload it, say, tonight, late, and then tomorrow, sometime during the day, before I go pick up Nathan or whatever, I click on publish. Boom! It gets published, and now it's made available, and it's totally visible to everyone who may want to watch it or not want to watch it. So, Premieres does the same exact thing, except for one little, one little detail. It shows you the thumbnail prior to the actual so-called scheduling date and, and uh, time. 
so it self publishes self. Just like when I do a scheduled one for seven o'clock tomorrow evening, you will not see it. In fact, in fact, the last two videos I did this weekend, one of them went up at noon on Saturday. That was yesterday. And one of them went up at noon today when I was walking the beach with my wife. It just got published on its own because I scheduled it. I was not using premieres. You did not see it until 12 o'clock noon. Okay, 11, 59, 59 seconds, and then 12 o'clock, boom, it appeared. And it looks to you like I just go ahead, went ahead and published it manually, but I didn't. I scheduled it. Now, the difference between scheduling in this manner and premieres is that you see the thumbnail, kind of like a teaser, kind of like a, a heads up that, hey, gang, you know, by the way, 18,000 subscribers now. We're getting up there. So, hey, gang, at such and such a time, Jose is going to upload a video. In fact, it's already uploaded. You just can't watch it until 5. Well, people are already getting really ticked off that they have to wait till 5. In other words, the idea of seeing the thumbnail prior to its release time and date is really disconcerting. I just don't get it. Because I would normally make you wait a certain time anyway. I guess people just don't want to see that that preview thumbnail. Because then they think that, okay, he's making it available, but not at my convenient time. Well, I never do it at anyone's convenient time. Actually, it's more like my convenient time. It's when I am able to do it. And so, for me, it is more convenient to do it while I am at home, sometime around noon. Sometimes I do it at night. Sometimes I do it at 9 o'clock at night. <clears throat> so what this will do is allow me to upload, say, let's be extreme here, 10 videos, 10 different subjects. And I schedule them one per day. And I may do some at 5. I may do some at 4. I may do some at 7 at night or noon or whatever. I could do them all at noon for, that, for all that matters. The idea is to find a time where you will garner enough viewers that want to sit down just like a live stream just like you guys do here tonight i got probably i don't know how many let's see i mean it's just like that there's no difference at all we got 24 people here with us so 24 of you thought it was important enough for you to sit here and watch me blab so that's where you're here now the same thing would happen although the release of a video through premieres is not a live stream. You don't have to watch it then and right there and then. And that's what's really ticking off people. They think they have to watch it at the release time. No, you don't. Ignore it. If you want to sit there, you, you know, happens to be convenient for you, then sit down and watch it. Who knows? I may get 50 people waiting for the video. And that's what YouTube is trying to do to help us creators, especially the mid-level to super small like me creators. So that will allow that video to get an instant shot or what they call velocity or traction right off the bat, from the get-go. You got 50 viewers watching your video. That will cause the algorithm which controls everything that goes on to then think okay that's a pretty good video got a lot of viewers that first hour wow let's go ahead and promote that video a little bit more than others that's all it is yes we benefit of course we benefit that's why they are doing that of course they benefit too obviously oh you know they're going to make they're going to make more money they're going to get better advertisement higher paying advertisements placed on those videos because the algorithm will think that they're getting more traction. But the the idea that you have to watch it at 7, is, is, no, it's not true at all. You do not. This is not a live stream. You're not tied to it like you are here tonight. If you want to interact, then you have to be here right now with us. That's the only way you're going to interact. You cannot interact later. Even though you get to see the chat, you will not be able to interact. So... Enough said. That's that's just it. I'm going to go ahead, 
and try it out. In fact, I'm not even allowed to use it yet. I'm not big enough for that yet. So it's going to be kind of trickle down policy. It'll come down to us. And you guys have to tell me, do you care about this? Does it really tick you off that, you know, you're going to see something uh, available at five o'clock, but darn it, I'm not available at five o'clock to watch that video. I, 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 I only get home at 630. Well, then watch it at 630. It doesn't matter. I would have, I would have uploaded it and published, uh, published it at five o'clock anyway, manually. It's just that you get to see the little thumbnail prior to it. It's like a, like I said, a heads up, a little teaser that at a certain time tonight, there's going to be a new video from me. If you care to watch it, fine. If you do not care to watch it, you don't have to watch it. You can watch it next week. It really doesn't matter. The idea is to get us a little kind of impetus, a little push. So that is it. I hope I didn't, you know, turn anybody off with, with this opener. But that's what's been going on this past week. And I was really getting a little bit like, why are you guys complaining? There's no difference at all. Okay, it's just to help the channel. You help the channel and guess what? A channel can create better and better videos because they're earning more money. Bottom line, you got to earn some revenue to be able to then produce better and better material content, as they call it. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about our favorite subject, printing. Let's go over to uh, my Facebook group. And by the way, remember, guys, don't join my regular Facebook page. Okay, that will not get you any printing information. Join the group. If you want to still be friends, fine, I'll friend you, but you're not going to get anything out of it. Okay, that's just there kind of to support the current uh, printing, J. Toolman Photo Printing Techie group, and you have to join. Now, recently, be aware that I uploaded a recent profile. Remember last time I tried to create the profile here? And it was acting up. Well, it wasn't the i1 Pro 2 acting up. It was the fact that I had a glitch on my actual print, the print of the patches. And the uh, spectrophotometer read row 1, 2, 3, 4. When it tried to read 5, it detected something was wrong. It needs to see what it expects to see. This is all pre-programmed. So it expects to see a certain color. If that color is off beyond a certain parameter, beyond a, beyond a certain amount, let's just say, error, and there's nothing else you can do about it. And you look at it and you see nothing wrong. So I went ahead and simply reprinted it. Took a little bit more care printing it, I, I suppose. I don't know what I did wrong. And dried it and read it. And boom, it was fine. Okay, so I let it dry another day just to make sure it was fully dry in case it was something to do with not being dried enough again remember these inks tend to gas off and they do shift slightly in color so i wanted to give it the best possible scenario so i let it dry like two whole days i went ahead and scanned it made the profile tested it bim bam boom and it was beautiful so that gave me the confidence to post it for you guys to have and it is right here the can i misspelled it canon pro supposed to be pro 100 and once you do that you can't really change it you would have to rescan it and rename it you can't just write over the uh, name of the pro of the uh, profile so it's canon pro 100 red river paladuro soft gloss again i misspelled that again i was so excited i was in too much of a hurry when i created the profile so just click on that download it try it out you have to have precision colors dye inks in your Pro 100, and you have to have used that Pro 100, refilling those original OEM cartridges at least three cycles, because you want to have all of that original, wonderful, perfect ink out of that system, and now you're running into not so wonderful, not so perfect ink. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean it's bad. That means that it just needs to be reprofiled okay and the inks are so close regardless but reprofiling it always will get you that closer to perfection so it's there grab it and use it that's what i put it up there for normally this will cost you about 30 dollars 
So it's just enjoy it. It's one of my little freebies that I like to throw out at people, especially since I am using that printer anyway. I might as well do that. So guess what came um, today, actually? No, yesterday. We were away. So this was waiting at the door, and I'm glad nobody nobody came by and, you know, lifted it. Um, breathing Colors, another sample pack. Remember last week I showed you that you can actually still use that code. And so I did. It went through perfectly. And I am probably going to get a call from them pretty soon because I'm expecting other items from them, uh, especially the uh, Allure Aluminum that we're going to be testing on the P800. So, again, now I will have the ones that I have already used up. I had one of each left. And so now I have two extras of each. And so that'll give me four. I'm going to try to order another one. But if they call me up, I'm just going to plain ask them, you know, to send me another pack. Tell them what I am doing, and I'm sure that they will be very interested in my results, especially since I'm going to be working with third-party inks. So that's going to keep me busy, I hope, next week. Um, hopefully nothing else will happen. Actually, what am I saying? Next week we're going to Florida. So, you know, the following week, I would say. So Thursday, just so you guys know, we'll be leaving Thursday morning. We'll be arriving back uh, Sunday mid-morning actually no sunday afternoon i hope that i am not so tired by the time we get back if not i will go ahead and schedule a uh, live stream for next sunday evening as we are doing today so and then we'll get back in the groove again and keep doing it on saturdays all right so let's see what's up what's going on here anything again i just got home a few hours ago and i haven't had the chance to really check i took my phone with me and took a bunch of pictures and now i realized that indeed i can transfer remember i knew nothing about these babies i could transfer directly to my computer without having to go through you know using my wi-fi or or, or my uh 4g my data transfer so i went ahead and plugged that into the computer copied over the pictures and the videos that i needed to use and the pictures are going to go to my wife, and she's going to go ahead and send them off to her sister because that's the other side of the family out in Wisconsin. And so, yeah, I did that quick video. It came out beautiful, I think. And, again, these cameras are good. Of course, they're not going to, you know, be as good as my 4K video camera. You know, of course not. But anyway, you know, if it's in your pocket, what can you say about it? Not much to complain, and I'm using a little program I think it's a little mini version of Photoshop to allow me to do some editing on the fly and that sort of thing. And so it's pretty good. I like it. And so far, I've been actually using it for phone calls and not so much for the other aspects of it. So that's really what I wanted it for. But people laugh at me anyway. All right, let's go ahead and look at Facebook, see what's going on. Somebody just posted this uh, asking about high-resolution monitors and how do they work with some of the applications that we use, as well as do they really need like an ultra-wide, high-resolution 4K monitor? The answer is I really don't know. I have a measly little, you know, 24-inch. Um, um, I think it's not even 16 by 9. It's more squarish than anything else. And it it calibrates beautifully uh, what I see is what I get on my prints unless I have a larger space I really don't see myself ever uh, getting something in the 4k curve type screen or super wide or double screen setup uh, at this point I really don't need it um, one of the uh, I think Cliff Medina here says something about the um, bank monitor um, and a, a bank queue and for eight hundred fifty dollars and comes with a hood so that you can really do some accurate editing without any light coming from the size affecting what you are seeing on the screen again that's good i edit in a really dark room right now the room is lit the room is lit brighter than it will ever be during normal operation so when i am just sitting here editing my lights are off 
it's practically night in here, and I get a brilliant, brilliant, beautiful results on my screen, down to 80, luminosity 80. So, again, I never see myself having to need a hood. But again, if you are going to be getting into uh, print matching against your screen, then you got to make sure that you illuminate your print and none of that light hits your monitor. So the, the use of one of those hoods is perfect for that. That will isolate your monitor away from what the print is getting as a result of that viewing light showered on it. And you need that in order for you to be able to really accurately determine whether your print matches your monitor. If your print is not lit correctly, then don't bother. Don't bother doing it. Uh, you got to have the right color temperature light source to illuminate your print. Otherwise, even if it's perfect density wise, the color will be mismatched because you're illuminating it with a different color temperature light and you're looking at your monitor that was probably calibrated to another different white point and so the two will not match. Color temperature of the light, white point of the monitor has to match. That way what you see here is more accurately um, seen in other words so when you then look at your monitor then you can make a decision saying oh yeah i see a slight difference in color okay this has to be perfect and the viewing light has to match that white point <clears throat> so again i am not an expert on that field so i'm just giving you a very basic background of what i know uh, others have taught me so thus Anyone know of any videos showing how to empty the Canon 750ml carts? Yeah, in my channel. I, I'm i sorry. I, you know, I don't want to lose it. But why are you in my group, which is kind of tied to my channel, and you're asking about videos that are obviously available in my channel? Just look. Please look. And I'm going to do this later very commonly. In fact, someone else, someone else may have already done that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, anyway, so it's very simple. Those cartridges, for those of you who may not know and have those types of cartridges, they are totally different valve-wise. In other words, the, the, the part that connects to the ink lines in your printer, uh, that would be a Pro 2000 and up, by the way. The Pro 1000 has just a single exit port. How does it vent? How does it vent? Because there's no other way that card can possibly vent as you're sucking ink out. You're going to create a vacuum, right? How does it vent? It vents through the same dual purpose, I guess you can call it, spigot that enters that card. Okay? Enters the port, the O-ring uh, port on the cartridge. So the, the, the spigot goes in, it can actually suck ink out, and it can vent air back in. So it has a dual purpose. Now on the other cartridges, I think the one, what is it, 130? I want to say, I really am not sure, 130, uh, then the 300 or 350, and then you got the big ones, the 750, 700 ml cartridges. They have two ports at the end. You have one in the center, and then one off the side, a little bit off axis from the center, you know, in a radius. So there's two ports. And those serve the same purpose as that single port for the Pro 1000. One allows ink to exit, and another one allows air to re-enter. And internally, there is a, a little pipe full of little holes. Okay. And remember, these cartridges fit upside down. Not upside down facing down and so as ink is being pulled out air is entering to replace that space that the ink vacated and the air does not go where the ink is it goes up that little tube and then it is expelled and little bubbles come out the side of the tube and so on and it kind of helps also in slightly agitating the contents of the actual cartridge as the ink drops air is being replaced in there there's no ink bag of any sort. It's just a container with ink and it is uh, gravity fed. So to suck out the ink, that's what they want to know. You can suck out ink a bit at a time, insert a needle 
you need a rather stout needle, maybe about a one inch 16 gauge needle, blunt. Stick it into the central port. I mean, no, I think it's a side port. The central port is the one with the uh, air pipe. So stick it into that, that side port, pull some ink out. You're going to have to then, you're going to create a vacuum because you have no nothing else inserted in that vent hole. So ideally you need two needles. This is where it gets tricky. Two needles, one inside the center uh, port and then syringe with whatever volume size you want to use in the other hole and then rather trickly you know tricky you you know tilt it and suck ink out and you know air will enter yeah you could make a mess uh precision colors has come up with a method that has not been passed to me yet but apparently because he's buying multitudes of these cartridges to extract the ink and make up the oem portions of the ink set that he sells for the pro 1000 and the pro one so he's figured out a way to do it quickly and efficiently but that's the only way that i know of i'm doing it like the printer would do it one spigot in the air port meaning the one that vents and the other needle in the ink port suck out some ink and air will enter through the syringe needle into the cartridge to make up for the vacuum it's not easy okay it's not that easy or you can just you know <laughs> Drill a hole in the back of it and just pour it out on a big bottle. That's That would be the quick and easy way. But, you know, you could make a gigantic mess. So, anyway, so that is, you know, the, the, the easy way to do it. Again, drill a hole, drill a bent hole, and pour it out just like you would pour a Coke out of a can. So, or use the needles, and that way you still have ink inside the cartridge that's safe and kept, you know, sealed away from any impurities and so forth so i'll read this a little bit later again remember i just got here and uh, i haven't read it yet so here's my wife's video i'll give you a little quickie view of it i had it's really an odd thing i had um a musical track to it and somehow either my editing software removed it what the heck am i doing Oh, wait a minute. Theater mode. No, we don't want to do that. Okay. Ah, uh, there's a glitch here. It's a glitch with the view. But anyway, that is not what I want to show you guys. Alrighty. Hey, I love live streaming. So anyway, I viewed it up on my TV and it's fine. But here's what happened. And you guys can watch it whenever you watch. Want. Here's what happened. I uploaded a music track with it. And the processing was taking forever and finally the thumbnail came up that it was already like ready to go but it was not done processing well i just closed the window reopened it and i saw that the thumbnail was there i had already gotten several views and i decided to go ahead and check it out upstairs and my music track was gone so somehow it got removed so i did have a music track to go with this but anyway, check it out whenever you get a chance. Kind of shows you the uh, immediate area around the motel that we stayed at and how pretty the whole place is. Back in the 40s, like I said, the 30s and 40s, this place would be packed with people. And after the big hurricane came up the coast and practically destroyed this community, uh, it's been probably 10 years and it has now finally begun to grow back a little bit. And people, uh, my hope, my motel was full. And all of the other motels were also full. There were parties going on at the clubs, the beachside, um, you know, bars and all of that. So quite active the other night, uh, Sunday morning when I shot the video, pretty dead. So of course, it'll, 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 uh, liven up tonight, I'm sure. Profiles and black and white prints. I saw a video where there, where they say that you print black and white. You do not need to use ICC profiles. True. I myself use Epson. I have added a, a link. And yeah, you know what they're talking about? They're talking about using um, advanced black and white. Okay. I use profiles when I print black and white. 
Okay, I use profiles when I print black and white. I sent an RGB file that is converted to black and white, but it still has all three channels. Okay, and I print with my RCC profile. I get perfectly neutral and linear results. Now, what they're implying is to print using advanced black and white, especially since we're talking about an Epson here. And that just does not require a profile. In fact, you just tell the driver to control color. You choose advanced black and white. I have several videos. Please don't ask me here about videos. They're here. They're in the channel. Over 1,100 plus videos. So look in there for the advanced black and white videos. Just search for that. And you will find them. You will see results that I did with the P800. You will see results with the uh, other, I think it was the 2880 and also the uh, 3880. So it's all there. What happens is that the printer would then go ahead and after you set it for a specific tonality, in other words, you want a neutral, you want a warm, and you want a cool looking print, then you actually set the density and people recommend dark setting. I don't know why, but apparently it, it prints it at the correct density that you expect it to be by choosing dark. And then you click on print. And then what it does, it uses mostly whatever black ink you have switched to on Epson printers and the grays. And of course, a little bit of yellow and magenta to um, counteract any kind of non-neutral or non-linear neutrality in the image or the print that you get. So it will use up a little bit of yellow, a little bit of magenta, and it will end up producing a neutral print. Now, when you use your warm setting to create sort of like a sepia look, then it will use more magenta, more yellow. And I think what it does when you print cool, it's a lesser amount of uh, yellow and a little bit more magenta because I think the inks themselves have a weird non-neutral, non-black, neutral color to begin with. You perceive it as black, but it's not really. So it's just a little bit of uh, compositing, if you will, and you get a pretty good result. I mean, you get a really darn good result. You may get a variation in the way uh, the lower uh, third of the tonality curve is rendered. I have found that <clears throat> in some cases, I get really good shadow detail, a little bit more separated than using the regular RGB color mode with an ICC profile. But again, it depends on the ICC profile. Good custom profile can handle just about anything. So advanced black and white works quite well on the Canon. It would be the black and white mode. It's the same thing. You allow the driver to control color and it will do the same thing. It will use your blacks and then it will use your grays and then it will use a little bit of magenta and yellow to neutralize or to shift over over the neutral zone a little bit, but it will be linearly. So you're going to create a very evenly uh, toned, say slightly sepia toned print or a slightly cool toned print. And yeah, it works quite well. Uh, for those of you who really don't want to get into, you know, uh, color management and the, I guess the horrors of uh, ICC profiling their use, then use the black and white mode or use the advanced black and white mode in Epson printers. It'll be fine. What do we have here? <clears throat> hmm. All right, let's let's go. I'll bite. I'll, I'll look at this. Just wanted to show everyone that what two different programs result in printing. I guess they're using different editing programs and then sending the image to print. The photo on the left was printed from Lightroom off of my computer. The photo on the right was printed from the Q image program. You can see the difference in the sky. One is green, one is blue. And what I see in Lightroom, but it's, it did not print from what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. I'm getting confused here. I better look closer. You can see the difference in the sky. One green, one blue. The blue is what I see in Lightroom, but it did not print from Lightroom directly with the correct color. For me, I get the best and truest color from QImage. 
I don't understand what you just said. Um, you used Lightroom, but you did not print from Lightroom. So I, I, what are you talking about? And again, baloney. This should not happen. Okay. Absolutely should not happen. Um, printing out of Photoshop, out of Lightroom, out of Q image or Q whatever. It should not influence what the print looks like because the program itself Unless you're doing something wrong, it's not going to influence the printer driver. Okay. If you turn off color management, the printer driver, and you have an image in Q image or an image in Lightroom or an image in Photoshop. Okay. Photoshop could indeed influence the way it turns out because your working space, your working color space in Photoshop could cause some shifting of colors. And then that's what you send over to the printer so that could happen but not Lightroom Lightroom will not do any kind of manipulation to your image you do the manipulation to the image Q image the same thing it does not affect the original image whatever you edit that is what is being sent so if you have say for instance a, an image in Lightroom and you edit it and then you use the Q image export filter or, or plugin and you export it to Q image. You can print from both platforms and the image will be absolutely identical. I, I just don't see this happening. I'd have to see it. I'd have to see your workflow and see what it is that you're doing now. And then somebody's just, just talking about the light, the, the lighthouse. You know, please stick with the subject, folks. Hmm. Have you tried soft proofing in Lightroom? No. Give it a shot. My prints went from gray to hard magenta shift and I could not figure it out for the life of me. I watched a video on soft proofing in Lightroom and it fixed my issue. Make sure your profile and your intent are good, meaning the rendering intent. Okay, then someone see. Uh, folks, if you're going to comment, please provide some useful information not what you are able to do um you know if you if you can come up with a reason why this person is getting a green sky clearly in this first image here print and not in the second one you know then provide possible uh reasons why that issue is cropping up instead of talking about you know you um I'm tired, so maybe that's the reason I'm coming across that way. Please forgive me, you guys. Um, right now, I can barely see out of my eyes. All right, they want to know if they alter the image. Well, again, it's it's all it's all tied into the workflow. And again, um, when that happens, if it's okay, like if your printer can print what it receives. Okay, regardless of where it receives it from, then if the image looks identical on two different platforms, editing platforms, and you send them to the printer and you get a different rendering on each print, something is off. Okay, you're doing something wrong because it just cannot happen. If the same values are being sent to the same printer just from different sources, then something's happening to those values. They're being shifted somehow. And that's what it is. It has to do with the workflow, possibly have to do with the settings you're using in your particular uh, editing platform. So, you know, just investigate that. Troubleshooting has to be done systematically, not crazy. You cannot be reaching for possible reasons. You have to process of elimination, do the most obvious check first, and then move on to the more um, more difficult or more or less likely reasons for something to happen. But you have to, you know, proceed in a, in a logical manner. Um, all right, so let's talk about something else. Anyone know how to get an ICC profile for Red River Premium Matte Canon Pro 100? Precision Colors inks and Precision Colors inks. I contacted Red River about it, but they directed me to Precision Colors. I contacted Precision Colors and never got an answer. Why are you contacting them? Just look on the website. 
look on the website, look on the Canon Pro 100, okay, and over to the far right, there's an ICC Profiles tab. Click on that. There are sets of ICC Profiles for the older ink set and the newest, the newest Signature Edition plus OEM Red ink set. What do you have to find out? Just download it. Download it. If it's for a Red River Premium Matt, I, I'm sure they have it because he has a relationship with Red River. They provide him with papers for him to profile. Let's see what people answered. Yeah, so that you guys understand. And let's see. Here is, uh, I believe the profiles can be downloaded from the PC website. Well, he said it in less words than I normally would have. Uh, PC is a two-man operation. Mike and his wife. Patience is needed. I'm a one-man operation, so don't ask me why I didn't get something done in one day when I got a hundred other things to do on one day. So, you know, it's impossible. So we need to be patient with people like them and me that we don't have a team of people behind us supporting our, you know, requirements. Um, when you hear company, you think of a building with a reception desk and a couple of receptionists and, you know, uh, HR and, you know, finance. No, no, no. It's an apartment. Two people running it. Okay. One big room is actually their warehouse. So keep that in mind. The fact that they can produce what they produce, forget it. I don't, I don't have any complaints whatsoever. I mean, because they're doing impossible things. Plus shipping. There's no shipping department. He drives all that stuff every single day to a local guy who then uses a system that they have in Canada that uses USPS. Then he goes across Niagara Falls over to New York. And then from New York, he gets shipped to the U.S. That way you don't have to pay the exorbitant prices you normally would have to pay. So what more can you ask for? And we still complain. Good Lord. You know, there's nothing to complain about. Download the profile. Boy, I need to, I need to calm down. That's what it is. Please guys, calm me down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to the uh, chat in a minute and say hello to everybody. I can't believe all you guys are with me on a Sunday evening when you could be doing something clearly a lot more fun than this. But anyway, I appreciate it a lot, a lot, a whole lot. Okay. So believe me, the info you will get is worth the wait. Mike is an expert in his field. He is. And has given me a lot of printing advice over the years. So download that. And if you still need something else, a paper profile that he does not have a profile for, always contact me. You can contact me and I'll take care of you. That's what this bad boy right here is for. Right there. I got a bunch of cables sitting here. For the time being, I was doing some DVDs for my uh, machining videos that I sell. Um, but you know, I'll take care of you. Like I have taken care of everyone else who has needed a profile and they all love them. So that I am very happy about. Somebody just got back from Photokina. Wow. That's in Cologne, Germany. I was there back in like 82 when things were still analog throughout. And I loved it. Spent three days there, uh, with our army group. We went there, all of our photographers when they're actually, we were all from the NATO uh, countries and so we went for a three-nighter at Photokina it was wonderful man absolutely amazing and I could just imagine what it must be nowadays very cool oh my gosh look at this guys I gotta make this big um, how about that for a display of paper now I have maybe like a shelf about this much full of paper but this is rolls of all sizes of course this lucky person lives in Dallas and so he's able to go directly over to Red River and purchase whatever he needs I'm jealous of that especially when you have all of the clearances that are going on where they're selling stuff super cheap and it's still good I mean that's the way to get paper and get it you know in an affordable manner so you can then print especially if you're using 
good third party ink set you can print without any kind of worries about cost you don't have to worry about that let's take a break right now let's jump over to the chat because everybody has been here patiently with me i need to get my icon out of the second monitor by the way my second monitor is a little wee thing right here can you see it right there all right so let's switch over to desktop view and we'll go ahead and start looking at some of the hellos and welcomes and all of that good stuff see who we have here with with us tonight let me get my there we go got to make that icon fly from the little second monitor uh anthony petit is here so that's great cliff medina of course he was here before these two were here before the uh live stream even went live eli is here uh robert gully gully is here rob's photography is here from texas we got two people from texas the same town um awesome peter jorth uh he hi all from good to see you we have anthony petit again uh how's it going uh let's see large large shipment from red river will be here tomorrow yeah eli uh don't even tell me about things like that man <laughs> philip klein is here uh he wants to have he wants to know of a good suggestion for monitors for previewing prints is that previewing or you just want editing so that's the important thing you need a monitor that's able to be accurately calibrated and not all monitors are able to be accurately calibrated so again don't ask me i am not an expert i'm sure here there will be some people that can help you out with that particular question that's what we're here for to help each other out uh of course eli immediately jumped in philip i have heard ben q ben q makes good accurate monitors but I think any monitor that is calibrated will do. Yeah, any monitor you can calibrate. Now, some of the monitors, the so-called color space will be either sRGB or Adobe RGB. It just depends how much you pay. The larger your, your color space that you can see, visually see, then it makes sense for you to work on images at a higher uh, or larger color space. Um, it's all about that. That way you get the most accurate uh, rendition of the colors that that image contains that file the the the, the data of that image as it gets transformed into a visible color set of colors the more accurate your monitor can display those colors the better it is for you as you are visualizing your images and trying to edit them we have um spike 597 from madison wisconsin all right we have john fletcher from england Wow. Isn't this a work day for you or is this? No, this is late night for you. This is like, what, midnight, one o'clock over there? Wow. London, England, by the way. Eli says, I have watched one so far and it was very good. Um, you mean a monitor? I don't know what you mean. Maybe a video, a monitor. Omar Gonzalez, Don Juan, hello. Don Juan, Don Jose. Don Jose. Juan was my grandfather on my mother's side. So I am Jose. He's from Texas. Cal Johnson just donated $2 Super Chat. Please, folks, don't forget that this is a chance for you to support the channel in the only way that a live stream allows you to do so, and that is by Super Chatting. Ask me a question. You Super Chat me at the same time. I will stop what I'm doing regardless of what I was doing. And I will jump over to help you with that particular question. Something that's been troubling you, something about color management, something about, you know, something that may save you some money down the road. Again, this is how you support us whenever we have a live stream. And that is one of the things that that premieres option allows you to do. It allows the viewer who feels like, wow, I just learned something that's going to save me X number of dollars. I will not be making this mistake because I heard Jose tell me otherwise or whomever. So I save you $200, $300, throw $3 to the channel. You'll be able to do that using premieres. That's one thing I left out and that's one thing that 
I think people just don't like it either. I don't know why, but you know, I, a lot of people love to take information and run with it, just run away. I, I, I don't do that. If I find out something, and I will tell you something at the end that's going to open up. Remember the 55 gallon can of worms? Yeah, the D word. D. You know what that is. They fly. So I'm going to throw something at you guys at the end so that I, maybe that'll expand the live stream another hour. I don't know, but we'll see. And whenever I learn something, makes me, you know, change from making this decision to that decision because you just provided me with a reason why I should not go down this road. Hey, here's five bucks, man. You know, you deserve it. So, again, that is the way a channel survives. If you think they're going to survive with AdSense or ads, not going to happen. And, again, if this year keeps going the way it is, I'm not too sure about what what we're going to be doing. Okay, I'm not too sure. Um, but I don't want to really make everybody sad or worried about anything. But, um, you know, things are not really going that well on the channel. So as far as what we need to be able to survive, you know what that is. It's a sign about that in this shape, you know. So anyway, let's continue. Enough of that, about that. Any Epson large card K3 ink okay in the 2880? So Cal Johnson had a question. I should have seen it. I apologize, Cal. Um, K3 inks, the ultra chrome K3 inks, as long as the magentas are vivid magenta. Absolutely. You can use those on the 2880. The 2880 Oh my gosh, dare I say this, it's probably one of Epson's best printers out there. The quality that it puts out, the size of the of the droplets is super tiny. The detail it can produce is fantastic. And it just keeps on working, keeps on working. Set it, if you have one, which I assume you do, set it with an external ink catcher so you can then reset the, the counters whatever method you decide to use, whether you want to use uh, the WIC tool and pay 10 bucks a reset, which is really reasonable. Collect all that crappy ink before it goes into the waste pads. And then you just reset it to empty like it was like it was new and continue printing. You can use the adjustment program, which is if you can find it, you can buy it from some folks on the uh, uh, eBay. And... That allows you to reset as many times as you want. But again, that printer is fabulous. Re refillable cartridges work fantastic on it. Not a problem. So yeah, you can use whatever ink set you want, third party or otherwise, but get your cards in large formats that you can get off of eBay, even if they are expired. Don't worry about it. They have to come from a printer that uses large format cartridges and uses K3 Ultra Chrome Vivid Magenta inks, okay? If they use those inks, then get yourself 300 ml cartridges, 220 or even 110. And sometimes you get it. I know I can get magenta for like $12, $13 for 110. And then just aspirate that ink. You use a regular syringe needle for that. Not a needle, but a regular uh, uh, plain tip syringe. You just stick it right into the port. Tilt it to the side a little bit to not seal against the poppet valve and suck out the ink you want. The ink lives inside ink bags, so you don't, you're not introducing air in there. You're just pulling ink out. The ink bag will collapse. The contents are maintained fresh, and so you don't have to worry about contamination. So, yeah, you can do that. Long explanation, but, yeah, you can do that. And, again, it's a wonderful printer for you to be testing other ink sets if you wish to check between OEM and say uh, Cone or Precision Color Signature Edition, which can be used on the 2880 as well. One cleaning cycle, boom, you're done. You pushed out whatever minuscule amount of OEM or whatever other ink lived in the printhead, it's gone. It's not like a sponge cart. It has to be refilled several times. It's not like a printer with ink lines, with stationary cartridges and ink lines. There's a lot of ink still inside the printer that needs to be pushed out you're pushing out expensive ink you complain about the cost don't even think about using different ink sets in the pa hundred 
or the Pro 1 or the Pro 1000 or the, any other, the, the P600 from Epson. You got a lot of ink inside the printer itself. There are internal dampers on the printhead assembly. You have ink lines. So every time you switch, you're wasting a ton of ink. And also, you better have an external ink catcher to catch your inks or a printer with replaceable waste ink cartridges. Boy, all right, let's continue. Easy Airbrush. You guys know what's the best third-party ink for Epson 7010. 7710. Looking for the best sys. What is a 7710? I have no idea. How about we look for it? I'm always curious. 7710. Okay, so this is just a uh, desktop model, like a workforce. Yeah, that's a workforce printer. Um, again, I have to... Oh, shoot. You saw what I was going to show you. All right. Hope you guys missed that. You can catch it on the replay. All right. The... Uh, Workforce 7710, um, you're going to have to look online. You're going to have to look at the various uh, third-party ink sellers and see what they have to offer. I am totally ignorant about that particular family of printers. Um, from what I understand, if they have cartridges that ride on top of the printhead, then yeah, you could use a SIS unit. If they have stationary cards, you'll be using a SIS on what it's already a SIS type ink delivery system it doesn't really work very well okay so think about that if it's a, a printer that has cartridges on top of the printhead and it, they move back and forth with the printhead then sure you'll have to find a reliable sys unit or just go with refillable cartridges that's a lot more reliable than a sys unit that may not operate correctly that may be you know, occasionally aspirating air back in and, you know, creating all kinds of havoc where you think you have clogs constantly. And, you know, will the chips reset automatically for you and all of that stuff. So be very careful when you think about that. All right, so Eli says, is responding to that, I think a good system would be this to keep this live stream in Premiere videos when you have the time to sit and interact with the viewers. Uh, Eli, it's the, the premieres is not a live stream. Nothing of the sort. They're regular videos. Absolutely the same thing I'm doing now with my regular videos. You just get a preview announcement, like a little ad. You get a little ad that says, hey, tomorrow at 7 o'clock, this video will be available. That's it. You don't even interact with it at all. I'm not going to be sitting there you know, interacting with you. It's just a video, me sitting down, talking to you, or me demonstrating something. It'll just be pre-announced. That's all it is. Why is it so hard for people to understand that? It is not a live stream. You do not have to watch it when the video becomes available. Just like today at noon, I made a video available. I made a video, uh, getting tongue-tied, I made a video available. I scheduled it to become active or visible or you know what's the word uh, uh, published at 12 o'clock noon the only difference between doing it that way in premieres is that at 10 o'clock noon before noon you would have seen the actual thumbnail and then you know at 12 o'clock it would have been active so if it's something really super horrible then I'm not going to try it. But I'll still be scheduling my videos like I normally do. You guys don't know this, but I've been scheduling videos forever. Okay? They have been already up. They're up there in, in, in YouTube land. They're up there in the servers. You just can't see them yet until I tell them what time to for them to become published. And it does it automatically. It's hands off. I'm away somewhere. The videos are made visible at whatever time I told it to be visible. So the only difference is that you will see the actual thumbnail two hours before it becomes visible. That way it gives you a heads up. You might be working. Oh, uh, Jose is going to have a video at 7. Okay, I'll come by at 7.05 or 7.30 or 8. Doesn't matter. 
You just know that a video will be available tonight. How many nights do you sometimes remember in the older days where I wasn't uploading regularly? A couple of days may pass and you don't see anything new from me. You see, now you will know whether there will be something new or nothing. That's all it is. It's just like a little ad, a little preview. Like when you see on TV about a show coming up next week on Wednesday. That's all it is. Again, you don't have to be there on Wednesday. You don't have to be there. It's not a live stream. It's a catch anytime you want to type video. You just get a preview ad, a little heads up, a little teaser that tomorrow at 5 I will have a new video up. You will see that. In fact, the next time that I the next time that I do a video, I'm going to I'm going to share with you guys when the next one will be up. That way you will know. Again, it'll be the same thing as what this is going to implement, but I'll just be telling you verbally, okay? Wow, I didn't know it was going to cause such a ruckus. All right. Eli says, why are people mad about Premiere? I can't do, it can't do any harm, just good to those who can watch. Yeah, it's just that. Um, I could put out on Facebook, for instance, hey guys, uh, tomorrow at 7, I'll have a video. That's the same thing. What's the difference between that and actually seeing an icon show up? Just like when there's a, a live stream, but you can't access it yet. You click on the button and nothing happens. Live stream not available yet. It hasn't started yet. The same thing. So you're going to come back at the time the live stream begins or a little bit later. Maybe an hour later. Who cares? As long as you're there, you know. So that's that's all. It's, it's really nothing that critical or crazy, guys. All right. You're welcome. No problem about the profile. I hope you worked out. I, I wonder if you tried it or you're not using 100% uh, Precision Colors inks yet, Eli. So once you do, or if you can find yourself a second set of empties and fill them up with PC inks, you can jump right in and use that profile. I, uh, I already compared it with an established profile for the Pro 10 this time and uh, using Precision Color Signature Edition. I also checked it out against a profile from Ardenburg for the Pro 100 using, um, I think it was uh, Luster, Pro Luster from Canon Paper, and they are a match. So the Palo Duro Soft Gloss looks absolutely perfect. So at least on my particular printer, only because my Pro 100 for about five years has been running on Precision Colors inks nonstop. So... Of course, I'm running absolutely every molecule of ink in there is from PC. Okay, let's see what else we got. We have a couple of uh, comments that were retracted for whatever the reason. Uh, let's see. What do you want me to put up, Eli? Uh, what what do you want me to put up on the screen? You ask me, Eli. Oh, you're asking. So Eli says, can you put it so we can see your screen? You mean me? You want to talk? See me talking? Absolutely. I didn't know anyone would prefer that. Oh my gosh! You want to see me? Wow. Okay, fine. I will look in at this and then I'll be talking straight to you guys. That's. I guess that's what I'll do. Uh, Leif Wickland from Sund Sundsvall, Sweden. Wow. That is crazy to me. I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate that. But I, I just cannot believe. I just told somebody that I s noticed on one of my videos, I looked at the demographics, and I had like 150-something countries watching at certain levels, you know, not thousands in each country, but, you know, still reaching out to so many people. And it's really great. Uh, I never, never, ever expected that to happen. Uh, Rob's Photography says, you need one of those phone gimbals called Smooth Key or similar to this new phone. Yeah, I know. Um, still, still, amazingly, it is pretty steady. 
it, it has built in, um, I suppose, uh, stabilization. Um, so it kind of does that really drunk look, you know, but if I get the gimbal, then I'll be able to hold it. It'll be like a three axis type deal like you have on uh, drones, I hate to say. Um, some of the drones, the really costly ones. But anyway, yeah, that will help. But again, you know, I'm not going to be using this for, you know, absolute photography or videography. It just comes in handy. I'll take it to Disney World with me next week. And of course, I'll use it. I doubt that I'll be taking my regular cameras with me now that I have that. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe some something like that will be available soon. Maybe I'll ask some company to send me something. And that brings something up that I had to discuss. Several people, no, quite a few people have been asking me, and I better take some drink. Jose, have you ever tested this with this and this? Or have you ever used this printer? Have you ever tested this paper? Again, how am I going to do that when we're not generating the funds to be able to have me buy that type of uh, media, inks, printers? There's no way that I can do that. Okay, we're barely scraping by. So, here's the thing. You want me to test something? Call the particular company that sells that product. Tell them who the heck I am. Tell them what my channel information is. Tell them my email. You guys know my email. Um, have them contact me. And uh, we'll discuss something. If they are really confident in whatever they're selling... And they don't mind a third party person that's not going to, you know, sugarcoat anything. Cover it, especially, especially if they realize that I'm going to be opening doors for them that would not be available because most papers that are sold, for instance, let's just touch on papers, are meant to be used with OEM inks. So contact these companies, tell them. Then contact the ink companies, tell them. You're curious about something else besides precision colors? Contact them. Have them send me samples. They may have already heard of me. They may be running away from me because they're scared of what I might say or, or declare or discover. So if they have confidence, they will absolutely provide me with uh, you know supplies that I can then test. Just like Cone did, just like Condi for sublimation did. Okay? And several other companies have done so, that have done that already. Um, Ink Alf is one, and of course Precision Colors. So contact these folks, tell them who I am, tell them you would like to see this particular paper tested thoroughly and scientifically done on a particular ink set that you're interested in buying, and do that. And either they will turn you down face, you know, face to face, because that's the last thing they want. For me to discover that, you know, their inks are not what they claim to be, or their paper is not what it claims to be, or so forth. So, it's as simple as that. Some people already done that, and we will see. We'll be hearing from them, or we will not be hearing from them. So, I cannot be buying all this stuff on my own. I really cannot. This pack of paper here that I showed you earlier, from the uh, Breathing Color Sample Pack, that super sample pack that costs like $45, well, I got it for free. I just paid shipping eight bucks. I could afford that. Okay. The family budget, I cannot touch. That is private, folks. This has to survive on its own, what we are doing here. And so there's no other way that I can do this unless the, you know, the companies themselves send me stuff for me to test or the channel all of a sudden blows up and becomes rich. That would be the only way. So enough on that subject. Let's go back over here. We got one here in Spanish. Uh, no, that's not that's not in Spanish. I just saw a couple of words that look like Eli says I have a DJI Osmo Mobile Two. DJI are the ones that make uh, those things that fly as well. Um, one hundred twenty nine dollars. Boy, I will have them have to send me one. That's a bit steep. That would be uh couple of weeks of uh, earnings for the channel just for me to have something for my own personal phone I don't think that's gonna work Fabian Aldazabal hi uh, how close are PC inks now to OEM 
for Canon ProGraph 1000. About as close as you can possibly wish for. Okay, that's all I can tell you. The ink set is composed of not only the Precision Colors inks, but also four OEM. Okay, yellow, magenta, blue, and they're using OEM chroma optimizer because simply there is no other chroma optimizer that even comes close to OEM. The same thing with Epson in their uh, gloss enhancer or gloss optimizers. None, absolutely none of the available third party gloss optimizers even come close to original OEM. So that's what he saw. And so that's why he decided to also use Chrome Optimizer OEM. So he's buying those 700 ml cartridges we talked about earlier. He's sucking out the inks and he has them selling them in lots of 82 grams or 82 ml each. So every time you buy an ink set, it will have loads of 82 ml, which is all you need to fill your original uh, Pro 1000 cartridges. And folks, make sure the cartridges are empty. Do not fill them prematurely. Let them run empty. The Pro 1000 can be run empty, no problem, as long as the cartridge had 80 ml of ink or 81 or 82, no more than that, okay? You can let them run empty. They will be empty. You will not hear any kind of ink sloshing around. If you try to fill a cartridge with 82 grams of ink that had, say, 7 grams of ink in it or ml of ink in it, you're going to have an ink explosion when you remove the tip. That pressure will build up. You'll have ink all over yourself. Then you will complain. So, you know, keep in, keep in mind that they must be empty because it is a closed system. And it's a special refilling method that you have to use to uh, allow you to inject ink into a closed system. You don't have that two-vented uh, spigot to refill your cartridge with like the printer uses to suck out the ink. It's a different system. You have a single tip and you're sealing it. And when you push ink in, guess what? You're going to create positive pressure. So there's a method to do that. Oh, how do I find out that method? Right here again in the channel. Pro 1000 playlist. Go in there and search. You will find everything you need to know. Everything you need to know about the Pro 1000. Using it. And then when you decide, oh, oh I'm going to use Third-party ink said, what do I do? It's all there, folks. So make sure you look for that. I didn't do that just for the heck of it, okay? It's there for the information, to make that information available to you guys. All right, I just got really messed up here. All right, so we are back where we were. Okay, so somebody wanted to know, Jose, we do not see the Facebook page you are looking you're discussing, yeah. Um, just look for Jose Rodriguez on Facebook. You'll find what I'm talking about. There's actually two pages. One is a family one, and one is what I intended to be a photography printing uh, page, but I soon realized that I had to really create a group. Otherwise, it's just going to be people talking about, you know, hey, look at the plate of food I'm just about to eat at a restaurant, that kind of thing. And, of course, that's a... That's not what I had intended. And so everybody who friended me there are just there, but they're not really aware of the fact that, hey, there's a private group I can join that's going to be absolutely 100% filled with crazy printer people. That's what you should be in there, not on the other page looking at whatever people did at the park. You know, that's fine. But that's not what you think you were signing up for. So join the group. This is where we have fun. Spikes, uh, Eli, Spike, I pulled up, pulled it up on my computer and I am scrolling through looking at it as he is talking. Yeah, there's a little bit about printing because people in there still kind of have that mindset, but it's not as intense and as dedicated as the group is. So just keep that in mind that if, if that's what you were looking for, join the group. You know, don't you can do both. That's fine. 
but join the group because that's going to be just intense, nothing but printing information. Monitors, everything to do with the editing process also. Some people, that I think that, that one that we saw earlier, he wasn't sure whether he should post that right here, the uh, uh, one about the uh, calibration of monitors and what monitor he should buy. Um, but, you know, that's fine. As long as it's related to the subject of printing, we do not mind at all. All right, so Spike Five Nine Seven says Eli. So I'm a, so I'm so am I. But it would be easier if Jose allowed it on his page. Um, what do you mean if I allowed what on my page? He will notice in a few minutes. I am reading on the Facebook group right now, not the page. The page is, is totally unrelated, okay? Okay, it's not it's not this. The page the, the Facebook group says fo J Toolman Photo Printing Techie. Okay. My other page is just Jose Rodriguez. Okay. All right. Several messages retracted. Uh, somebody told me, stay calm, my friend. Yeah, I'm just tired. I'm tired. I um, tried to sleep in. You know, when you go to a strange place to sleep, you don't really get a good night's sleep. I was up half the night just hearing noises from people st still partying at the clubs down the uh, boardwalk and so on. And so, yeah, the hotel was, or motel was wonderful. I had the best room in the whole place. Uh, we were at the end where the hotel wall is actually circular. So it was really cool. And um, you see the beach right there, the river that is. It's a, it's a river slightly mixed uh, uh, fresh water and salt water because you see the ocean just across. There's the little area down in the southernmost part of Maryland where you see the uh, the uh, basically the horizon forever. And so on the Virginia side, that is. So... You know, then, you know, you have to drive back and lots of idiots on the road and lots of near accidents that I actually witnessed coming back. And it kind of winds you up. And I try to then calm down when I got home. And I thought, you know what, maybe this will calm me down. But lately, you know, you get easily triggered by little things and you try not to. I need to hang out with my grandson. He'll keep me calm. Grandpa, let's go play. And then I go play. I get on my hands and knees with them. And we play with little Hot Wheel cars or run trains. And that is the best therapy ever. And Ricks can do it. Uh, hello, Jose. I'm the guy that changed out the printhead on the 1430. Well, that's quite an achievement. Man, that is more than I would ever, ever want to tackle or even think I could do. Um, maybe I should play around with some of my broken printers and see if I could do that. But the thing is, maybe mechanically I can, say, uninstall it and replace it, but how do I know it's going to work since the printer is broken anyway? But I should I should uh, mess around with that a little bit and get my hands dirty, so to speak, in the uh, mechanical side of printers, which I really don't know anything about the uh, my friend Paolo from uh, Florence, Italy. He's not here tonight with us, but the guy's an expert, and he's self-taught himself. And right now he's fixing probably, I mean, totally refurbishing printers, literally from the trash, or for very little money, or giving given away from him to him, to fully working, fully operating, and then he resells them, and that's how he survives, which is really great. We have WD Boston One. Hello from Boston. All right, nice to have you here. Uh, Ricks can do it again. I love my Bank Q Bank GW twenty seven sixty S. Okay, must be one hell of a monitor. I hope so. Um, I got a cheapy little. Well, actually not. It wasn't cheap. It was five hundred bucks. 
and HP, woo, HP, W, that's little w, 2408. It's not a bad monitor at all. Um, I love it. And so far, it has lasted me, oh boy, knock on wood, for about, gosh, eight years, nine years. I think we're talking about monitors here. Fabian, uh, Spike 597 Fabian. I, too, have the Canon Pro 1000 and use PC inks. PC says to use OEM red, blue, yellow, chrome optimizer, and purchase PC inks for the rest of the colors. They work great. Yeah, you can go either with the with that uh, suggestion. In fact, now I believe that they are beginning to make available 100% OEM loads, which you can get. It's going to cost you more, but it's still going to save you some money having to not replace cartridges every single time. The only other investment you have to make, of course, is a single-use chips, 15 bucks each every time you need one, or the auto-reset chips, which are $25 a piece every time, but they reset themselves after they go empty. So that is a one-time purchase. You should be able to get many, many refills out of your Pro 1000 before it decides to go mechanically you know, under, if you if you know what I mean. But, you know, that should be many, many years of service. Um, you may have to replace a printhead at some point. Canon printheads are supposed to be replaced every so many years, especially in production-type printers. So whether the printer mechanically continues to work for many, 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 many years, the printhead will have to be replaced at some point. And we've discussed that about the uh, so-called redundancy of these uh, spare nozzles that they come with um, when you basically destroy a nozzle it is replaced on the fly by another not working or not being used nozzle an extra nozzle and so that comes into play without you knowing and so at some point you're going to run out of nozzles in a specific channel that's it whether you have nozzles left on the other channels or not you can no longer continue in the printer will tell you that you need a new printhead. You'll get a certain error, believe me. And, oh, did you hear that? So that's my phone. That was Ric Flair's, woo! That means that I got something. Let's see what it is. Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing important. All right. Let me turn that down. I didn't know I had it so loud. All right. That's not going to bother us any longer. Okie doke, let's see what else we got. People are talking about monitors still. That's great. And we got somebody here, Robert Smeltzer from Avenue, Maryland. Where's Avenue, Maryland? I never heard of that. I'm in Kensington. Kensington is between Bethesda and Wheaton. So just north of the yeah, DC line. Henry Stoffel is here from Wells, Maine. Craig Chris. That's a fun name right there. Canon Pixma Pro 100 Jam. The ink heads don't move when I turn it on. Who can I go to for assistance? Well, that would be the service center, I'm afraid. Uh, if you cannot do some sort of contortion to, you know, get that to, to basically unjam itself, um, you might want to unplug it completely off the wall. Check to see if there's any physical obstruction along the way. To me, it's it's all about the gear system. They work. They operate on gears. So, and and and, and um, those tooth belts. And so, when something is jammed up, that means that you know something is jammed up. So, if you mean that. Okay, the, the ink heads don't move, so that means that it's jammed. So I thought maybe you meant that you cannot remove the printhead, but no, you're talking about the actual uh, printhead assembly not moving. And do you hear any noises? Do you hear any grinding? If you hear any grinding, like, like that, is the cog belt skipping over the gear. The gear is turning, but the cog belt is not moving because on the other side, you got a jam, you got some obstruction. Something is jamming now. This is a Pro 100. Is that what you said? Yeah, Pro 100. So can you tell me where you're located? 
if you're in the U.S. and where did you get the Pro 100 from? If you got it from a dealer and it's under a year, you may be able to, you know, talk to them about that. But if you bought it off of somebody on Craigslist or some other private source, then you're basically on your own. Uh, again, I would call in uh, if you have a, a service center somewhere nearby. And by nearby, I mean like at about an hour away. That's usually the case. For me, it's about 40 minutes away from where I live. And yeah, you might want to contact them and see what's up. Because it sounds like a mechanical obstruction somewhere in the drivetrain. Stu Ro Ro. That's what I'm... Yeah. Stu Ro Ro. S-T-U-R-O-R-O. Hi, I found your channel recently. I think it's great. Well, good. Have you subscribed? If, if not, please do so. Uh, join the group as well. Because if you are a printing maniac, this is where to come. Okay, we're becoming probably the ultimate channel and group in the world in this particular subject matter. And we want to stay that way. Dan Frieza. Hello, Jose, from St. Clair Shores, Michigan. I recently upgraded from a Canon Pro 100 to a Canon Pro 10 and love it. All right. Yeah. Um, what do you think is best? Which one do you think is best, uh, at least for you and your images? Where are you seeing any differences? Are they uh, producing the same quality prints? Uh, if so, share that with us. Some people immediately claim that the Pro 100 is better, you know, Again, Pro 10 is pigment, of course, so you, you're going to have a better rendition on uh, matte type papers if you use the fine art setting, of course, so you can trigger the use of matte black ink. Um, Pro 100 doesn't really perform very well with some of the high-end um, non-glossy type media, especially, um, you know, the high um, fine art media. So... They do perform flawlessly on glossies, luster, satin, and even Burita, semi-gloss, or soft-gloss type media. They do produce beautiful results. Um, are you going to be using third-party inks? If so, you know, throw that back at us, discuss that with us, and we'll talk a little bit longer about that. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask right here. Omar Gonzalez. Okay, so quick question. On the Pro 100, what weight paper is good if you do not need studio photo quality? Oh boy, that that is a almost unanswerable question. Um, if you do not need studio photo quality, so you just get yourself a regular uh, Pro Luster type paper from Canon or you know any any other provider. It'll probably be a, maybe a 60 pound type of paper. Um, that's all you need if you don't want non-studio. I don't know what you mean by non-studio results. Uh, if you mean like fine art type papers, you know, 300 gram, you know, 90 pound papers, the printer can still handle that. It can, it can handle that. It's got a manual feeder in the back. So you can use the thicker papers. You can use the stiffer papers on that printer. No problem. As long as the dye inks get along well with a, so not so shiny type paper, but your best results will be on a on a regular RC or resin coated microporous type glossy luster satin paper. Okay, that's where you're going to get your very best results. The same person, uh, Eli is answering this person. If you are not very professional, then stick with OEM. I would use PC inks. Oh, he asked, okay, he wanted to know, he said, uh, am I best sticking with OEM ink cartridges? Yeah, if you, if you really don't know anything about color management or anything like that, you want basically out of the box performance. Yeah, OEM, of course. OEM inks, OEM paper. That's it. Especially if you're using the same brand as the printer. Your driver comes already loaded with ICC profiles for those uh, branded type paper combinations against the Pro 100. So whatever the Pro 100 has a setting for in the paper choice, you will have an ICC profile 
built in and that will be residing in your computer which then when you decide to learn the process you can then access that but the driver by itself will print very very well without having to go through the whole color management um, process using Photoshop, Lightroom, or Q image or whatever you're editing with. And of course, Eli is providing some uh, advice very well. Very nice, very nice. Uh, he's stating that it, I would rather, I would start with OEM and then move to PC, Precision Colors. I can see zero difference between the two. Well, the difference is going to be in longevity. The match is going to be near perfect. And of course, just like you stated here, excuse me, eight to 10 times cheaper as you refill. Because remember, guys, you're going to refill a low cartridge. And that means that that sponge is still going to have clinging inside of it about five milliliters of ink. That leaves about another seven or eight max that you're going to have to just refill with. So you're refilling that wet, that liquid chamber, not the wet chamber, liquid chamber. So you're only going to be filling about seven to eight ml and your total cost is going to be about 10 cents an ml. So you can do the math. It's actually pretty good. Consider spending $15 per cartridge or 70 to 80 cents per cartridge and depends also on the volume of that particular refill kit that you buy so the higher volume bottles will give you a cheaper per milliliter price but only buy as much ink as you're going to be using in say max eight to ten months people say six months but yeah you can go beyond that but not too much beyond that and be very careful with contamination your process is not handled in a clean environment okay fungal spores are your worst your worst enemy with dye inks so be very careful especially print heads that are thermal like the canon ones okay so the same guy um oh, omar gonzalez is smiling at me because he called me don juan or uh, Senor Juan. Um, Stu, Roro, Eli, I'm not a pro. I just like good quality. After watching Jose Rodriguez videos, I think my usage my usage leans toward OEM. If it gets too expensive, I can change later, I think. Well, one thing that you can do, and I don't know about lately, but in the past, you would be able to just go to Canon, say, order your inks in packs of two. So say, for instance, red and yellow, two, two uh, cartridges. You would spend $30, a little bit over $30, and then you would get free paper. And often it was quite a generous uh, offer of paper, like a 13 by 19 pack of paper, 50 sheets. Sometimes it'd be even more than that. So I got several full sets of OEM cartridges for my Pro 100 that I bought in that manner, and I was able to just bring home all sorts of paper. My wife would say, what is that big old box for again? I said, honey, that's just paper that I get for free when I buy inks. She looks at me with that, you know, that look like, okay, forget, I don't, I don't even want to know. So anyway, but yeah, um, I haven't looked at that lately to see what, if anything, they offer now, but that used to be the way we used to get basically free paper and not just cheap paper, I'm talking about the full quality Canon line. All right, let's see what else we got. All right, so, and Stu Roro says, Eli, I can understand that a bit like you, your, your own service on a car, yeah. That's exactly what you're doing. You're doing your own service like you do in your car when you do an oil change yourself. Paul Walker from Poland. Are you kidding me? Wow, that's amazing. I tell this to my wife every time and she just shakes her head like she doesn't get why, the why of it. But I really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. 
You have saved me so much. You have saved me some money. Thanks for your tutorials. Thank you again, Jose. Thank you so much. Yeah. Glad that I was able to help. Eli says to Stu Roro, I'm also, I also highly recommend the Pro 100. It is an amazing, it is amazing. Just got my rebate card a few days ago. Yeah. In the United States, you can get that baby for hardly nothing. It used to be net like $50 after the rebate. Now it borders around a hundred dollars, maybe a little bit more after the rebate. Um, 200 Mike Tech says, uh, Jose, that picture of all that paper is for, is for sale papers for Red River. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Oh, so that is not somebody's. Oh, okay. I get it. Wow. For a minute there, I was going to be really, really mad at someone. No, I'm just kidding. Leaf Wickland. Have you ever tried to use Vivid Magenta inks in an Epson 2400? Absolutely. Thank you. You read my mind. Yes, I did. In fact, right on that very printer. When I had the uh, 2400, I thought I was going to get away with increasing gamut. And the fact was that the driver, the, in other words, the print engine, um, didn't like it. Uh, some colors went out of whack. Um, I was getting a lot of, uh, very, very deep purple colors out of, uh, what should have been a deep bluish purple color. So then I did a profile and I did manage to bring it down a little bit, to tone it down a little bit. But the difference was amazing in some prints and some types of images. Yeah, it did bring up, wow, it was really, really vivid, but it was wrong. It was not uh, natural. So, I mean, you could try it, and if you got the ability to make a good profile, like I have here, you have an I, I1 Pro, so you can do that. Yeah, try it. All you got to do is refill two cartridges, just change it over to Vivid Magenta and try and light Vivid Magenta. Oh, uh, Stu Roro is in the UK. All right, so they're discussing. I think Eli and he are going to become good friends here. That's good. Let them discuss. They're talking about rebates. You guys can look at this later on on the replay if you want to watch it later. Just kind of skim through it and see what people were asking. But um, Omar Gonzalez says, I was looking at what at that, and I'm so ready to get my Canon Pro 100 at that price. So Eli was giving him a deal that he just saw, $250 rebate, along with $50 free paper. The printer ends up being $60. So that's about as good as you get lately. And folks, don't ask me what the heck Canon is doing. I have no idea. At some point, someone has to be losing money. Ryan Lyle or Leo, is it possible to get close to silver gelatin look in the Pro 10, the Pro 10 setup? Well, probably not. No, there's no way you're going to achieve that because none of the papers that I have seen are 100% matched to say some, uh, maybe some texture matte paper that I would use back in the darkroom. Or, or a, a um, glossy paper that I would dry um, on the upside down on my on my drum the dryer or air dry to get a nice uh, non-glossy look, even on F type paper or surface paper. Um, no, there's just a certain look you just cannot match. Uh, you have different different coatings on papers until they come up. The Burrita papers they claim they're a good match. Now, I have just recently done two really good papers, but I go back to my old prints that I have a stack of that were printed on, on silver paper, and no, they just cannot compete with that. Um, that look was a look. It's not that it was better. It was just a look that you had. When we moved over to digital, and basically now we kind of mastered digital, uh, it used to be crap back when it began in the early 
two thousands. Um, but yeah, I haven't really come across anything that will duplicate the look of a good silver type paper, darkroom developed print. In other words, the Pro Ten. I mean, you know, you got to think also that. The more you use the Pro 10, the quicker you're going to find out that if you print on matte paper using the matte paper choice, the regular one, it's going to use photo black. You can only trigger matte black use. So you get the full benefit of that denser ink for the needs of the matte paper, which it needs a denser black ink. That's why you have a matte black ink. But that's only accessible in the fine art choice. And the fine art choice will implement a 35 milliliter, millimeter, not milliliter, 35 millimeter trailing. That means the first edge that comes out of the printer, leading, leading edge and trailing edge. So you're going to have these two wide borders, which then are going to take your print and reduce it. So you got a wide border on the top, the bottom, and you're going to have to put one on the right and left unless you just want to trim them. So... Regardless of that, going back to the, the, the look, whether the Pro, 1, Pro 10 can do that silver print look, um, you would have to search through many, many a paper and see if that would provide that look. Now, some of the look, of course, is also film grain. Film grain was the look that I loved, Tri-X, underexposed and overdeveloped. In other words, pushing it, one, two stops. And that would give you that super grainy look, very, very grungy look. I loved it from when I was shooting uh, rock bands in the 70s. Okay, all in black and white, buddy. Harsh lighting, you name it. And so that called for a rough paper. And that, that grainy look that that pushed film would provide. There's no filter that you can apply digitally that will create that linear grain structure. Meaning that... In dense areas of the negative, you would have a lot coarser clumps of grain, silver, developed silver. It's just tarnished, tarnished metallic silver clumps on the shadow areas, which would then become your, I mean, your, your very, uh, almost transparent areas of the negative. Those will become your shadows in the print. There was hardly any density there, so the grain would be microscopic. And so you can see what I'm talking about. The highlights would have dense gray, uh, grain. The midtones, less dense, less dense, all the way to the shadow. So you have this, this linear change in the clump structure. Well, a filter hasn't come up yet that I know of. If you guys know of one, please let me know. That can produce, take a color image. When I then transform it to a black and white and I apply that grain filter for Tri-X, I want to see that, that linear difference in grain structure. I want my highlights to have coarser grain structure than my shadows. And again, all the way across the tonal range. What they have now applies an even graininess to the image. And that is not the look. That is not the correct look. So again, it's not just the paper surface. It's not just the way that the the printed you know image looks. It's also that that grain structure that films at that time had. So hard to answer that one. All right, I'm looking past uh, some of the ones where people are just conversing with each other. I'm looking for questions. Okay, Ryan Lowe's Leo or Lyle. How about getting Pro 10 set up one for matte black for black and white setup and then the extra Pro 100 for normal prints? Sure, but setting it for matte black, what do you mean by that? You still got to use fine art paper unless you do this. Unless you take the photo black cartridge, remove the photo black ink and then fill it with matte black ink that's the only way and then you have to make profiles for all your matte media using photo matte paper choice in the regular media 
uh, choice, not the fine art choice. That way the printer just happily continues printing with what it thinks is photo black, but in reality is matte black. So then, yeah, you dedicate that printer to that. Guess what I've done? That's what I'm doing right now with my Pro 10. I have matte black in my photo black card. I had to think about that one. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I've been doing. So when I have to switch back, gosh, what do I have to do? Well, simply just swap the cards. Put the photo black cartridge with actual photo black ink in it. Run one cleaning cycle. Done. You're done. That's it. You're ready to roll. When you have to switch back for whatever the reason, again, just switch the cartridges. One cleaning cycle. In fact, the purge cycle that occurs after any kind of cartridge change will probably be more than plenty to push out either remnants of photo black or remnants of matte black. So you always have that printer ready at the go for you, regardless of what black ink you're using or how you're tricking it. We have Hanska. Sorry, I'm late. Hello from Tassie. I don't know what that is. What country would that be? Tallahassee? No, that's wrong. Robert Smeltzer, south and west of Leonardtown. Oh, okay, that's where... Oh, boy, I was just down in that region down there. Okay, I wasn't west of uh, Leonardtown. Well, actually, no, I was coming up on 301. 301 to uh, hook up with 5. And then hit uh, 4, 495 and go home. All the way to the top. So I was down in Colonial Beach. So that means I took um, Central Avenue. Is it Central? No. Uh, wow, now I forgot. Anyway. The big uh, thoroughfare that goes by Andrews Air Force Base, straight down past um, um, Rand, uh, Waldorf and then La Plata, and then cross the uh, nice bridge, and then head on over east over to uh, Colonial Beach. So I did pass the uh, sign that said Leonard Town. All right, uh, now I know where you live. Okay, Dan Frieza says, I got a great deal on a Pro 10. I gave my son the Pro 100. Both are excellent. I love and love them both. Refilling eventually will be easier on the Pro 10 than the Pro 100. Yes, absolutely. Pro 10 is a, just a, a game changer when it comes to refilling. If Canon only knew what was happening, uh, I'm sure they do, but they don't care. George Druin says to Chris, Chris, I had a problem with a stuck print head on my Pro 10. I contacted Canon, and after trying a few things they suggested unsuccessfully, they sent me a warranty replacement, no problem. Well, again, it depends how that printer was purchased, and the person did not get back to me, so I don't know. To this point, I really don't know. And Stu Roro says, I already subscribe every time I search for printing. It was your videos. Great. So when you guys are searching... For anything related to printing, how often does my channel come up? I really need to do some searching myself just to figure out, but I'm just curious to see what the so-called suggestion rate is. All right, Ryan Leo says, thank you. Um, Eli, Jose, have you tried Red River Paladuro Smooth? No, I have not yet. That's one that I don't have. So you, it says, I got some and can't wait to try it out, hoping it is like a finer texture etching. Yeah, well, like probably if it is, it's probably going to be a, like a hot press version of it rather than the cold press uh, etching. Robert Gooley, Bellenhauer, Bellenhauer, B&H, whatever that is. B&H price on the Pro 100 is 367 free $50 paper box. So that's uh, rebate 250. So that would be 300 total. Brings it down to 119. Yeah, that's pretty good. The $50 one is really good though. I guess you can think of the cartridges as free. Yeah. Speaking of the uh, Pro 100. Hello from Laguna Beach. This is a J. What is it? JLS Golf. Alrighty, from Laguna Beach. I lived in LA when I was a kid. So 
very familiar with that area. Ryan Leo, uh, that's, that will be interesting series to teach us on getting film look like you mentioned. Yeah, um, the problem is, again, like I said, now one thing you could do to actually get as close as you can, like me, if I have my old negatives and I have a really good film scanner, not one of these, I'm talking about a dedicated film scanner, then you can then go ahead and scan those negatives at the highest resolution you can possibly do it at. That way you will not only scan the detail, but also the film grain structure. And then you go ahead and you'll have digitized files from those negatives, pop them into Photoshop. You're going to have to scan it as if it was a positive, so you end up with a negative. No, I'm wrong. That's that's a transparency, yeah. No, I'm wrong. So scan it as a... So from negative to positive, that's what I'm trying to say. You have to scan it so that you get a positive image. And so I've done that a long, long time ago. And when you print that after you, after, of course, after you edit it, remove all of the dust particles that you're going to have on your negatives, just like when you use the enlarger, then you're going to go ahead and print those and you will get that look. It'll just be on different types of paper. And remember that none of the papers today existed back then. The look of, of inkjet paper will always look different because we went through a wet process and then we dried by air or by heat. And so the surface is going to look a little bit uneven, sort of. Okay, you're not going to have that perfect plasticky flat look that inkjet papers have. So it's going to have some irregularities when you do the wet process. And that, what, what do you have to do? Well, do you have to run your finished print through water and then air dry it? Maybe if you have inks that don't run. Um, I don't know what to do to achieve that, though. But physically, the way that the image looks will pretty much be the same because you're going to be scanning a negative and we're going to be scanning it at a high resolution. So it should be able to capture every, every aspect of the grain structure, whether it was color or not. Color had also grain structure, by the way. All right, Jose, uh, when I am switching cards on my... That's Eli, by the way. When I'm switching cards on my Pro 100, should I refill the cards that I take out of the printer now or wait until it's time to put them back in? Yeah, do it now. Why wait? Take one out, put a new one in, filled already. Yeah, refill it. Reset it, refill it, and put it aside. That's all. There's no really, there's no need to wait. Now, if you're going to be, if you get to the point, I know you will get to that point because I know you have two sets. When you get to the point where you'll be replacing complete sets, then sure, you, you, one card goes low, yellow goes low, you remove that whole complete set, put in a filled reset set of cartridges, and continue printing. Now you have that set of, one is low, and the other ones are at different levels, reset them all, and top them all off, and put them aside. By doing this complete cartridge exchange, you always are at a point where all your colors are at max. You're not, you're not at that weird, um, domino effect. You will be changing a card here and there every few days. And every few days you do that, another perch cycle. Rather than remember when you started with a brand new set, how long did it take for one of the cartridges to get low or empty? A long time. So that's what you want to achieve. That's, you, that's the situation you want to put yourself in where you will be only exchanging cartridges maybe once or twice every couple of months, every three months, if that much. All right, so let's continue. Then I'm going to show you what I've been doing and what I want to do. It has nothing to do with printing. If you guys want to leave, those of you who want to hang out, it has to do a little bit with photography. And so I want to touch on that, see what you guys uh, get. And again, I want to leave it to the end so that in case somebody wants to leave, they can just leave. Um, but... I've been really fascinated by this lately. Ryan Leo says, there, that's, that will be, okay, he's talking about the uh, uh, old prints and their look. 
Ryan Leo says, like, you mean like replace photo black with matte black? Yeah, you will replace the cartridge. Not, not put a matte photo black, not put a matte black cartridge in the slot for photo black. That will not be accepted. You got to take a photo black cartridge, take the ink out of it, let it drain off, do whatever you can to, in fact, run it till empty and then fill it with matte black ink. If you're going to be using third party inks, you're going to fill that one with matte black ink and label it because that will no longer be photo black. It will no longer be shiny black ink that can be used on glossy prints. It's going to be only used for matte media. Okay. That way you can tell the printer driver to use matte black paper and it will use photo black, which in reality is matte black. You get me? So you're fooling the printer. That way you will not be forced to accept those 35 millimeter leading and trailing edge borders. That's about three inches of your paper with nothing but borders when you add it up. So that is just a trick that you can do. Ah, Australians tend to call Tasmania Tassie. Okay, I get it. And gosh, what time is it over there? Is it morning? I assume. Isn't this a work day? I hope you're uh, not at your job watching me do this. But anyway, if you are, I appreciate it. Eli says that he sees me in forums a lot. Well, that is good to hear. George Druin, he's here. Just did a YouTube uh, search for photo printing. About half of the first 15 or 20 results are links to your videos. Awesome. That's great to hear. All right, let's jump over here really quick. Um, if you guys want me to stay full face, I'll do so. If not, I'll switch over to a desktop view. But we want to look at some of the um, questions on um, YouTube. I had a doozy of a question here earlier. I don't know whether it was YouTube or someplace else. Maybe uh, I have to see if I run into it, I'll be able to uh, answer it on the spot. Okay, some funny guy here uh, says, I want to win the panorama. Haha, <laughs> I know it's eight months late. I would like to know if you can print panoramas without the roll feed adapter, particularly canvas panorama. Well, it is kind of difficult to do. Uh, it's all about maintaining that alignment. Um, even the minuscule amount of skewing will eventually cause a hell of a lot of skewing. So you need an adapter to allow you to maintain that alignment of whatever the media is. So I'm sorry. Yeah, you can do it. Of course you can do it. You know, you would have to literally, you know, be every second of the print making sure that that, that media is maintained, especially canvas. Good Lord, canvas is flexible. Uh, even if you are trying to, you can't really force it once it's being transported to the printer. So it's going to be kind of difficult, kind of difficult to do, but not impossible. Can you, and the same person says, can you print panorama without the roll? Okay, that's the same question. Alrighty. So using Canon inks and, and with PC ICC profile, won't work for getting deep blacks what on matte paper yeah well you know you're talking about i don't know what you mean by that um is it about the subject we just got done talking about uh pigment cannon printers if not then uh, i really don't know what you're getting at um you can indeed get good blacks uh oh there it goes you can indeed get good blacks on any of the papers that Precision Colors provides ICC profiles for the use of their inks, period. So I'll get to these folks later. This is the first time I see these uh, questions. Haha, <laughs> you're a legend. I just sent email to Tess Pigmera HD inks for Epson's P600 and P800. Well... Um, 
I hope they agree to provide some inks to test on the 2880. Yeah, the P600, well, I don't have one of those. So that's out of the question. P800, there's no way I'm going to test a different ink set on that because of the fact that, you know, stationary cars, ink lines, and inks, and ink, and printhead dampers, that's a lot of ink to push through. No. So, like I said on a previous video, it's just impossible to do that. You need something like the 2880 to do that in. And the 2880 is not really a high definition or HD ink type printer. Of course, I can use it and test it and see. 2880, wonderful. Just need a set of empties, fill them up, put them in, one flush, done. Now you're printing with that particular ink set. And yeah, if they want to send me inks, like I said earlier, that's one way that I can test other products. I cannot buy them. There's no way. By the way, you guys got to watch at least 20 seconds of a you-know-what, okay? When the you-know-what pops up, in order for the channel to get full credit, 20 seconds. If it's less than 20 seconds, let it run, okay? But if it's more than 20 seconds, say a minute, a couple of minutes, you got to watch at least 20, 30. I think it's 20, but I've been told it's 30 seconds. So keep that in mind. That will... You know, allow you to go to the kitchen real quick, get a drink, come back, and start the video. If you let it run, so much the better. You know, so that's how you can support the channel. If you don't want to donate via Super Chat, that's fine. That's not a requirement, just a suggestion. <coughs> but the only other way that we can, you know, maintain the channel is through ad revenue. So keep that in mind when you're watching videos, please. Use a platform that allows the ads to actually play. Don't try to cheat your way through the system. You're not helping me at all. And you don't help me. If I don't get the help that I need, I cannot continue. And I don't want to go on this pessimistic uh, you know, road, but that's the way it is. That's the way it is, sadly. All right, let's go to the next question. Hey, Jose, nice video. Do you mind sharing where you purchased your poly canvas? Okay, somebody saw the video that I did where I sublimated onto canvas and again a lot of the canvases that you can buy are already polyester 100 percent polyester so i'm going to tell this person and i'll tell any of you here who are interested interested in poly in poly canvas or, or you know sublimating to any other type of uh, fabric as long as it's polyester you can sublimate onto it and ebay has it okay all over ebay so no problem there. Also, Amazon. So, Dear Jose, which type of clothes can we use? And I think they're referring to a sublimation uh, video, polyester, or high percentage polyester cotton blend. The best, of course, 100% polyester. Now, you don't like the feel of polyester? There are many different types of polyester weave that give you the feeling of cotton still being polyester. So you don't get that clingy, hangy looking uh, feel that you get with some polyester type shirts or garments. Somebody loves my videos. Says, oh Lord, I do love those types of videos. Ha <laughs> ha. After refilling the printer, still won't recognize. Ah, oh, here's the one. Okay. This should be a sticky in every printing forum in the universe. After refilling, the printer still won't recognize the cartridge as full. Dun, 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 dun. Do I need to reset the chip or something? If so, how? Well, let me, let me sneak over to the right and I'll show you. You probably cannot see this because I'm not showing you this. But this is in reference to a PGI-29 refilling video. PGI-29 is what? It's a Pro-1 cartridge. Can Pro-1 cartridges be reset? No, they cannot. That's why they sell decision colors in China through Alibaba. They sell single-use chips. There are no auto-reset chips for these cartridges. There is no resetter for this cartridge. Okay, so... You refilled it and it's still reading low? Of course it is. You have to change the chip. 
So that's your only option. And to change the chip, you have to modify the chip compartment. Yeah, you have to remove some plastic because the Chinese chip has the little electronic little um, thingy behind the chip covered, protected by a glob of black resin. And that glob of black resin has to be seated in that compartment. You have to mill away a little circular valley, so to speak, and then the chip will sit flush. Other than that, no, you cannot install the chip directly to the cartridge until you do modify it. You can use a knife to carve it out. Whatever you do, don't don't mangle the light pipe, okay? So that's why I was selling these cartridges already pre-modified. Unfortunately, I no longer have complete sets. I only have available 18 out of the 12 cartridges. The one that's missing, I believe, is light black. So that's a sad thing, but is the best that I can come up with at this point. And then some people are giving me condolences about my uncle and uh, all of that good stuff. All right, so let's jump over real quick to uh, DP Review, see if there's anything good here. Epson All-in-One Clearance Center, not interested, sorry. Ah, uh, here we go. This is a good one. Pro 10 refill problem. I don't know what, who could have a problem with the Pro 10 refilling. Hmm. I have refilled my Pro 10 several times. Also have a Pro 100. And have refilled that. Use Precision Colors ink and their resetters. On my most recent refill, all seem okay. I put the set away for a couple of weeks. Today I needed to swap cartridges and when done, all showed a reset and refilled cartridge except my yellow, which still showed near empty. I thought I might have missed resetting it, so I reweighed the cartridge. I got 31.5 grams. The cartridge is full. Well, 32, 33 is better, but that's fine. Cartridge is full, so I reset it again, but no luck. Still shows empty. Well, you have a bad chip. That's all that is. Your chip is bad. You just need to get yourself a new PGI-72 yellow cartridge. Sorry. Um, sometimes it happens. It does happen. Don't expect. See, here's the thing. Don't get into refilling expecting 100% performance, 100% results, and zero problems. You're getting into the unknown of printing when you get into refilling. So do expect some snafus, if you will, some problems, some, you know, um, things to just pop out of nowhere. Like in this case, a, a chip that doesn't seem to reset. Unexpected, that's the word. Okay, inrepublic.com, apparently out of business. Ooh, so that's one of the uh, inks that I used to uh, recommend because I had used some in the past, back in my R1900 days from Epson. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, it seems like they're, they're gone. And they're just talking about a 2200 here. That's an ancient printer. Alrighty. Okay, I don't think there's really that much more. Let's see. Canon Pro 100, $59. Yeah, we know about that. Alright. The new world of printing. What is that about? Oh, it's a, it's a video. Let's see. Let's see what they have here. Okay, hold on, hold on. I gotta let you guys watch this. Okay. <clears throat> we'll make it big. Let's see what they're going to talk about. Explaining computers. Okay. 3D printing. I'll oh, forget it. It's 3D printing. Here I thought it was going to be something about photo printing. Of course it's the new world printing. Yeah, we know that. Talk about um, clickbait. Wow. Black only printers. Well, here's Something that everybody wishes they could get a hold of. A pure black ink printer. Well, they do not exist. The only way you can get a pure black ink or ink 
black ink and grays printer is to buy an Epson printer that allows you to refill, first of all, and then go to johnconeinkjetmall.com and buy one of their piezography ink sets. And again, you're going to be kind of channeled into a neutral ink set or a warm ink set or a cool ink set. You cannot switch back and forth like you can using advanced black and white using the full color ink set. So think very hard about that. You may not need, believe me, if you if you know how to use advanced black and white, you may not need this. Now, some people have told me, oh, Jose, you have no idea how amazing the prints look using the piezography ink set. I don't doubt that at all. But then that printer is sort of dedicated to just that. Now, if you have enough bucks to buy, say, duplicates of that printer model, and you have one for color, one for pure black and white printing, then do so. That would be wonderful. I used to have the luxury of two 3800s, one for matte, one for glossy. But I no longer have that. So, yeah, you could do that. I don't know what the suggestions were going to be here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, he's talking about the same thing I'm talking about. Um, start experiment, possibly to discover some magnificent look of black and white prints, at least. Okay, this is the, the poster here talking. But again, you know, you have to have not only the black ink set, but you need a rip to be able to print with it and print accurately. So using your regular RGB ink set and advanced black and white, if it's like an Epson with uh, the ultra chrome ink set, K3, whether it's HD or regular, uh, Vivid Magenta or regular Magenta, you have access in the driver to advanced black and white. And you can exercise that and you can use it and it works great. It really does. Um, again, the slight differences will be probably in the shadow regions where you use the regular color image trans, you know, um, transform to black and white and then just print using the regular workflow that you would use for color images. That works just fine. Use a good ICC profile, a good rendering intent, and just print. And then you print the same image using advanced black and white an experiment with some of the modes that they provide you and take a look at that and see what you get. Uh, whichever one you prefer, whatever look you prefer, stick to it. And it's simple. You don't really need to, you know, dedicate that printer to just black and gray inks if you don't have to. Now, if you want to achieve, I guess, the, the nitty gritty of black and white printing, then sure, use one of those systems. You're going to need a rip to print from and so forth and the results will be majestic but then you kind of stuck to that it's going to be rather hard to go back to color all right so let me show you what we've been doing so nathan and i have been playing around with my little uh, it's called the mini orion and it was only like 59 bucks people um could not believe how cheap it was it has altitude hold it works really well it's super light the camera is garbage so it didn't work right out of the box at all. It wouldn't even recognize the uh, SD card, the micro SD card. So I talked to the company. They're going to send me a new camera module. And I'm waiting for it to arrive. I'm going to pop it into the Mini Orion and test it out and see if it works. It's a horrible video, you know, but still. That way I can just go ahead and give it to Nathan. Because I'm going to be getting this. And this was offered to me, okay. So this is the, there's lots of videos on YouTube about this. Again, if you guys want to bail out now, we are done with printing. This is my next thing. Now, how does this tie into photography? Well, actually videography mostly, but some photography. I'm going to be mounting my SJ cam camera, okay, which can do semi, semi real 4K, absolutely real 2K at about 30 frames per second at 2K. The 4K is just too slow. I mean, 15 frames a second. But I can do 1080p at 120 frames per second. And this camera, according to this, the weight, 
it's actually lighter than the one they offer for this particular flyer and i'll show you the specs in a minute the problem is that the attachment to the it doesn't it doesn't have a three axis gimbal so it's just a direct gimbal with some shock absorbers so you're going to get a little bit of a uh, shake now the problem with the camera that they offer you for another you, you would add another close to 125 dollars making it over 300 bucks it is too heavy and so it tends to cause some wobble and you get a little bit of wobble when you attach a lighter weight camera you get a very smooth video then it's not going to be gimbaled okay it's not going to be rock steady where if the if the if the drone does this it's not going to remain perfectly up and down in other words perpendicular to the earth so what does this have to offer well it is a double gps optical function positioning wi-fi fpv with 1080p camera that's not what we're getting we're not getting the camera okay it's not going to come with a camera so i'll show you some photos here let me enlarge this so you can see what i'm talking about here it is right here brushless motors by the way so that's good here's the gps antenna right there it has an optical sensor dual optical sensor that attaches to the bottom you have to assemble this when you get it it doesn't come cheaply pre-assembled and then so these are all the views this is the box it's the components and so forth that's the optical sensor that's the uh, top view with the blade guards this is the previous version which is not as good as the black version the black version we humorously call it the 3.0 version of this particular model drone the recent videos that i have seen from third-party testers these are people that have drone channels talk about it being outstanding uh, almost five stars out of 101 reviews and so they're they are offering this to me because i bought a previous little drone from them one of these little selfie follow me type drones and i bought that after i got the toy mini orion and i just want to test that because it's got the uh, g-force type controller you just basically hold it and when you tilt it goes to the left to the right up and down and that's really cool let's go over here to the uh video here's the video of it you can watch that uh at your own leisure you can go over there to the site or any site that has this uh i'll sim uh, g cgo35 look up cgo35 black okay it has to be the black one because that's the one with all of the upgrades what's good about this particular model and this whoever whoever this company is they are constantly improving they're listening to the reviewers and constantly improving their their um, products the previous white one had a so-called gimbal that didn't do squat constantly getting out of line constantly getting out of alignment you would have to be constantly adjusting it on the uh, controller now i am particularly interested in shooting video so i'm going to go to certain places that will allow you to do that and shoot some video using this camera this camera is proven okay this camera is proven to produce really really good video quality video so it has the uh, optical flow positioning smart orbit smart orbit shooting mode that's really cool i saw that demonstrated hd photo and video well that's with their camera which i don't recommend you get you would get this is the way it was going to look it's going to look with my camera mounted you have the gps positioning brushless motors which is really amazing for such a low cost drone usually they're brush motors optical flow positioning and uh it is a uh let's see oh it's got a 7.4 volt 32 milliamp battery that gives you like 20 minutes of flying time which is ridiculously good because the mini orion four minutes at the most so anyway pretty good size it's not super heavy it's not super light it's it fights the wind like crazy it really it, the videos that i have seen it really just rock steady even in slightly windy conditions 
I saw someone actually do this to it, and it just keeps staying there where you're at. It has returned to home. Fairly accurate. It's not going to land. It's not going to be like a DJI, you know, Mavic, which lands right back where the H is on the on the landing pad. But it is good enough. It'll land within a foot of where you took off from. And so that's pretty good. And so, again, all I want to do is use it for photography and videography. And uh, that is one aspect of those two fields that I have never, ever tackled, only because of the fear of not being able to fly. And these new drones, practically on GPS mode, you'd have to actually force it to crash. It's, it's, it's that good. Now, you go off of GPS mode, then you're in full control, my friend. You better know how to fly. And so for that, I've been using the Mini Orion, which has you know, the regular controls. You have auto takeoff, but then once you have taken off, it'll hold that altitude, and then you're on your own. Then you have to control it yourself manually. It has returned to home, but it doesn't have uh, follow through. It doesn't have auto circle uh, types um, flying pre-programmed so that you can stand in the middle and after you set your radius and then orient the uh, cameras toward you, it will then proceed to do an auto rotation, actually yawing as it turns. So again, it's just a press of a button and you do that. And uh, yeah, lots of little, uh, really nice uh, features. Um, of course, you have a, a, an app for your phone that you can use. And um, what can I say? I'm not paying for it, so it's going to be sent to me. And um, I told them who I was. I told them what I was interested in doing. And luckily, it's going to come from the U.S. warehouse rather than the Chinese warehouse, which takes takes about 14 days to arrive. So I'm trying to time it here. I told them to not ship it until maybe tomorrow. So by the time I come back, you know, Sunday, it'll be here sometime next week. So that's it. That is my next adventure, folks. So again, it's just something that I need. I need to do something to help me relax. And I have found playing with the Mini Orion, I have found that, gee, this is really something cool. This helps me relax. And the unfortunate part of it is that the batteries just don't last long enough. So after I get in the groove of about four and a half minutes of flying and I uh, use, I go to Nathan's house to do that. We have a couple of large play areas here that have enough area for me to fly without any obstructions or bothering anyone. It's just not long enough. So what I will do is get an extra battery and uh, go ahead and pop the camera in there and turn it on. You have to manually turn it on, of course. Their camera that you get, which is too heavy, you plug it in directly to the uh, drone and then you control it from your controller. And you can use your Wi-Fi application on your phone to see what you are actually recording. But there's going to be a little bit of a lag, so you cannot rely on what you see on that little smartphone keep you from making something stupid, some stupid move in the air. So you're better off using your eyes and not worry too much about what is being recorded. But once you get to a certain point, if you want to return to home, hit that return to home button. Actually, it's a lever. It's a little uh, three position toggle on either side. You have various modes. Hit that bad boy. Boom. The thing will rise up to a certain altitude. It will head back and it will drop down where it took off within a foot or two, which is good enough for me. So I told Nathan I was going to order a landing and takeoff pad with an H on it. So that's in Amazon. I'm going to spend a whopping $14.95 for that. And so I told him to be a good boy, and uh, maybe Grandpa will let him take off from that. So this bad boy here needs to be calibrated in several ways before you even attempt to take off. You have to do the compass calibrator, which means... Rotate it in this orientation, rotate it in this orientation, and rotate it like this. And then the lights go solid. That means all three axes of the compass are calibrated. I think that's what it means. And then you look for GPS. It'll connect to the satellites. You'll get all your lights will go solid black off, and you're ready to fly. The only weird thing about this is that you need to do the auto takeoff by pressing the central button three times beep 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 
Mm. And it'll just stay there until you're ready to go. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to be posting some of the videos that I hopefully I'm able to take. Should be a lot of fun. Anyway, but don't worry, guys. This is just a hobby for me. My vocation is still going to be printing. It's still going to be printing either directly on photo paper or onto sublimation type substrates. It's going to be more like 75, 25. So don't worry. We're still going to be covering all of your uh, printing needs here in the channel. That's it. I think I'm done. Let me see what else we got on the chat. I'm going to go ahead and close up all of this. And we'll bring the chat over here, bring it up to full. If you guys got any kind of questions, let me know. Right now we have about, we've been on for about two and a half hours. So we got another half hour to go if it needs to be. Let's see if anybody jumped into the drone subject. I know I got bombarded last time. Does QImage 1 have a zoom to fit feature? Can't find it. It's in there. It's just not as easy to use. I have to say, honestly. But it's in there. It's, um, I got her. I got her. Let me see. Let me open up the very latest QImage Ultimate. Or maybe we should open QImage 1 rather than that. So, Let's just see. So I have uh, 8 by 10. 8 by 10 and a half almost, it seems. Let's see. Let's look for. So we have 8 and a half by 11 loaded. So notice how you have that enforced uh, margin. Okay. Look at that. It's literally a quarter inch on the right quarter inch on the left you see that gray shadow that's what that implies and notice how the top one is much narrower than what the bottom one this is what a lot of people have been pulling their hair about because they do not understand that that is the driver doing that not q image that is an imposition okay this is your leading edge up, up on top this is your trailing edge on the bottom so what i have done I did a what, what we generally call a cell. I just pick one dimension, the short dimension, seven inches. So eight and a half, I end up with uh, seven inch from this edge to this edge. And then it automatically fits it to the upper and lower. So let's go ahead and, and just drop an image. Something that's not going to fit. Notice, well, let's see, something that's more visible with visible edges like this one. So notice what happened. Let me let me let me remove that a second. Notice that my cell is a lot higher vertically. Okay. So what happens when I throw this in there is going to fill the left and the right border, and it's going to leave whatever space was there. But I cannot grab it and move it. You see. And I think down here. I think it's here. There you go. So here's where it is. Now. I think I'm blocking it. Hang on a second. Gosh, I'm not even showing you guys. What an idiot. Okay, here we go. Full desktop without me. Now you can see what I'm doing. Let me go back to the same exp you know, explanation. I apologize. My bad. All right, so what happens? I have the Pro 100 open. I have 8.5 by 11 paper chosen. I created a cell size that the width was seven inches wide. You see that I got pretty much even borders all around, almost. See the left uh, in post margin is quarter inch, quarter inch. And this one is just under quarter inch maybe. And the top one is much, much narrower. That is just something that the driver forces is not Q image doing that. So, Let's just go ahead and fill this cell. And we'll fill it with something that's not going to fit. Obviously. You see that? Watch what happens. I'm going to I'm going to leave 
auto cropping on. You see that? I lost half of it. Turn off auto cropping. There, now it fits it all. So it's fitting it according to the left and right space. So this is seven inches from here to here. And this is more of a square looking image. So of course you got a huge gap on top and a huge gap on the bottom, but at least it's going to fit it so that it, the whole image is visible. Okay. Regardless of the ratio. So here we have a much longer image and it's going to fill it to the top and to the bottom. And of course you have a much larger gap on the right and your left because it is a more rectangular or, or, or panoramic, if you will, vertical image. But now if I hit this button here and I try to do that again, watch what happens. It's going to fill the complete cell. So that's like an auto fill right there. But it's located right here. It's called auto cropping. You want it off for most cases so that you can just load whatever image you got. Let's go look at some images here. One of our old time watchers, viewers and members of the channel from whom I haven't heard much lately, but she's really busy. Her work is taking off. She's concentrating mostly on babies now. But let's go ahead and throw this beautiful girl right here. And again, look what happened. Look what happened. Notice from here to here, but it's just going to fill it top to bottom this time because that's the maximum it can fit. So when you have this off, it's not going to crop the image for you. Okay, it's going to fit it as best it can without cropping anything off of it. So you're not going to be losing anything now. When you turn that off, then it's just going to fit it to that particular cell size. Watch. Boom. So now it did crop it. It did remove some off the top and it did make it fit. When I have that off, the whole image is in there. Okay. Now, when you have images that are practically the same ratio of the cell that you create, then it's not going to really matter much. It's not going to make that much of a difference. But um, let's look at something else here. Let's look at the downloaded images that I have. Here's a square looking image. You see that? It's going to just fill it. It's going to fit it to whatever edge, pair of edges it can best fit in. So this is not cropped at all. But if I click this button here and I fit it, it's going to crop it. It's going to fit it to my cell size that I created. And it's going to have to crop some of this edge here and this other edge. As you can see here, this side has been cropped near to the window. And so and there's also a way that you can actually slide the uh, image around, but I really haven't delved into that. So I don't know. I have to watch more of their videos so that I can learn how to do this. So here's a prime example. This is the print that I use, the image that I use for my mug, my little, uh, not mug, but my little um, coaster. You see that? But if I click on auto crop, it's going to fit it and it's going to crop it into a, a more rectangular version. You see that? So that is how that, that is how you do that. And uh, they have videos covering all of that. So it's not, you know, like it's some kind of secret. So they should be able to uh, provide you with a way to do that. And um, again, it's a little awkward. A Q image is not really a uh, piece of software that is designed like a conventional photo editor. It has been evolving forever. And so right now they're kind of stuck in that particular style or design. So otherwise they would have to totally rewrite it from the bottom up. And that's not something they're going to do. Uh, Q image one has been uh, basically rewritten from the bottom up, but they use basic um, QI design of Q image ultimate. So here it is, but we're not going to look at that right now. So let me go ahead and um, open up the chat again. See if there's anything that you guys want to discuss. 
Yeah, so here's people already talking about that. Uh, here's a question about the Pro 1000. But we'll get to that in a second. What if you have YouTube Premium and don't have any ads? How does that work? Well, YouTube Premium has a different way of payment or, or support for viewers. Since you are paying whatever it is a month, then a portion of that money times the number of minutes that you watch will come up with a certain amount of money that then uh, say I do a 10 minute video and you happen to watch the whole 10 minutes as you should be, then I get whatever amount it is that they figure out per minute. So, or second or whatever criteria they use. So that's how that works. Um, I do get a little bit of um, YouTube red revenue, not much, but it's a few bucks a month. And so that's from viewers that have YouTube Premium activated. How do you use roll paper, roll canvas? Uh, you use it just like you use roll paper. You have to load it into a roll holder in your printer. You load it and you print with it. That's as easy as that. Um, on the Pro 800, the P800 is quite easy. Once you load it, I've had actually very little problem with loading something is skewed. If something is not loading correctly, you better check the factory edge. If it's a brand new roll of paper, it might not be at right angles to the right edge or the left edge. So you have to take that into consideration. If you have a trimmer that's very accurate, you can go ahead and trim off that edge very accurately. So you have it at 90 degrees to either the right edge or the left edge or both. It has to be parallel, you know, I mean, not parallel, but at right angles. When you load it in and the sensor detects it, it pulls it down enough so that then the sensor on the printhead can travel across it and it will measure if that edge is exactly parallel to the travel of the printhead, then it accepts it. If the edge changes because it's skewed, then it will reject and it will ask you to reload it again. And if it's because the edge is cut crooked, no matter what you do, it's, not, it's never going to accept it. So you have to either get a, um, a, a square to cut that right angle with and, and a blade or use a very uh, accurate trimmer to get make sure that edge is nice and true. All right, so my Pro 1000 has a large amount of black ink in the sponge areas on both sides of the printer. My prints are not coming out smudge on the bottom. Uh, yeah, I, the next question is going to be, do you print borderless frequently? That's the reason. If you print borderless, it has to print beyond the edges of the paper. And guess where that ink goes? Those sponges are there just for that. And you have to blot them every once in a while to make sure that they're clean. Why would they offer borderless printing? I've never been able to figure out that reason when, in fact, they know very well it causes problems. The only reason I can think about is because back in the days of the, when the quick one hour stores at the drug stores and various places came up, you would get four by sixes on a four inch wide roll that were borderless. And then the cutter would just cut, 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 and you get beautiful four by sixes borderless. When printers became, became available to us users at home, we wanted that look. So we started demanding that feature. Printer manufacturers immediately thought, wait a minute, that's, that's going to cause problems. So when you choose borderless, you do get a warning, don't you? Yeah, the warning tells you everything. And it's not going to tell you you're going to get smudges, but it's going to tell you you might have a reduction on quality on either the leading or trailing edges of the paper. When you get to the point where the sponges are so full of ink that they start to smudge the back of your prints, it's time to clean those bad boys, okay? Uh, yeah, and don't print borderless anymore. Don't do that. It's just going to cause problems. We're all after fine art print look. That's not borderless. Borderless looks cheap compared to a true fine art print. Okay, it really does. Uh, some may argue with me, but that's my opinion. And I know that when you buy a fine art print, it's never borderless. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, borderless printing will overspray 
not only on the sponges but also all over the inside of your printer so try not to do that if you really love that look print it without with a border and then trim it um, you'll get a borderless print without any kind of expansion expansion is when the image is actually expanded so that it prints beyond so it actually falls beyond the edges of the paper that you're going to print okay if you have a cut sheet of paper 11 by 14 and you print borderless your image is going to be made like 11 and a quarter by 14 and a quarter so that you get an eighth of an inch bleed over the edges of the print and then the printer has to then print beyond those edges otherwise you might get a little sliver of a white border and then the look that you're looking for is defeated it's kind of you know no longer there you'll still have to trim it you know so but the idea is really not that good and it's really not good for the printers themselves um the poster answer eli eli i printed about 40 prints today postcards no borderless all had about 20 inch about 0.2 inch border okay so had i read ahead of myself like i should have i would have seen that now postcards postcards on the pro 1000 i'm sorry but that's kind of like overkill okay postcards can be printed on a little pro 100 and uh, you know that's more economical postcards on a pro 1000 is not really a good economical way to to produce those types of uh, products it's going to cost you a lot per card because it's going to do a head wipe after every single card okay and that's going to use i think it's 0 0.03 ml something like that or 0 0.05 ML. It's, it's not a lot of ink, but it's, it does add up. You do a hundred of them and it will add up. And somebody just posted on my Facebook group their results. And I tell you, it's who told me that? Someone did. They did a super duper detailed study, more than I would ever have the strength, ability, stamina, and, and patience to do in the Pro 1000. This person did that, and he came up with the optimal way to print with the Pro 1000. I'm going to have to dig that back up, and it's, for me, it's impossible to even begin to cover. There's so much information there, and there's so many variables about that printer that just makes it almost unpredictable when you use it. So it's, it's not like if you do this, this, and this, you'll get that. Okay, You'll get that kind of uh, usage no it's it's got a mind of its own so it does what it wants to do when it wants to do it but for a printer such as that that would be like a maserati printer uh for printing stuff that you can do on a toyota camry no no you know i don't mean to be you know what i mean so a more utilitarian vehicle so you should use a printer like the pro 10 for instance to do that type of work pro 100 maybe Pro 1000 okay it's fine but you know it's overkill and it's not going to be very economical okay enough about that um eli asked what about the past any borderless um i don't think he answered back okay here we go a few here and there the ink is super wet from today's printing yeah well let me tell you what might be happening even though you're not printing borderless, something is being deposited on those sponges. Those sponges are there for that very reason. And so what you need to do is you need to um, blot them. How? Cotton balls. Whatever you want to get, wet it with a little bit of ammonia type window cleaner. Q, um, here in the U.S. we have Windex. Wet it slightly and then blot, 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 blot. Paper towels, fold them blot blot anything that's absorbent and just blot those areas really well eventually it is supposed to drain into the waste ink system which is on the pro 1000 is a user replaceable cartridge but it happens so slowly that if you're printing beyond the ability to drain the rate you will exceed that you begin to cause a little flood here and there so that will then touch the back of your prints and you'll have problems and you can't do that with greeting cards they have to be pristine so 
All I can tell you is that maintain that printer by cleaning it often if you begin to see areas like that. So, Eli says, well, mm, I don't know. Then, sorry, Jose, we'll have some recommendations. Well, I've been talking about that for the last five minutes. So I hope that can apply. Just a matter of uh, cleaning. Pro 10 has the same problems, the Pro 1 as well. So make sure that periodically you go in there and you clean those areas. You will be surprised how much overspray, regardless of whether you print borderless or not, is actually taking place in there. Some of the very, very high-end printers will have a vacuum system that will suck up any kind of overspray and eventually gets deposited into the waste ink system. But, you know, the Pro 1000 is not there uh, as far as that feature. That's reserved for very expensive printers. All right. Ryan Lyle says, I use the Mavic Pro because I need to fly and run. Yeah, that's a fast, fast um, drone, let me tell you. But you know what? I've been looking at a lot of videos about the uh, Phantom, the Mag Mavic Pro, and the Pro 2. And these experts that have probably 300 drones in their in their garage, all on the wall mounted, they have some issues with uh, some of the uh, DJI products. I mean, they're very, very advanced. They have lots of advanced features. But one of them was that his uh, drone demanded uh, upgrades for firmware and many of the functions would refuse to work until you did a firmware update for that particular whatever you know and so he began to the point where he started hating that particular drone and he did a video five reasons why i hate my back Mag mavic pro and i think it was the mavic pro one maybe the two i don't know why but anyway maybe it's something you know um uh, native to that particular model of his and uh, not all the other you know pro ones or twos um i don't know i'm just learning this right now so i'm no expert uh let's see spike 597 says donovan a common problem with ink smudges in your paper is the paper thickness that could be too so um you're dealing with greeting cards greeting cards are not perfectly flat they have a a, a poor, especially if you're using media that's pre-scored, that's going to cause problems right there. And so, yeah, you have to look at, into that as well. But if you already have very wet areas on the sponges and any kind of any kind of deviation from perfectly flat, straight media, will touch that and will catch that. Will pick up some of that loose ink that's in those very wet sponges. So. Um, I always go back to the fact that you need to clean those really, really well. Have, get them to the point where when you touch them with your fingertip, you don't pick up any ink, okay? And you'll have to do that all the time. You'll have to do that constantly. I wish they would just tell you that when you buy a printer. They don't. Eli also have a Magic Pro. A Mavic Pro. Wow. One, uh, Eli says one... Uh, Jose, one tip on this drone is not to just return to home or any automatic flight features with cheaper drones. The GPS units often have problems. I had lost probably 10 drones like this. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll play with that and see what happens. Um, so far, every test that I've seen on this particular iteration of that particular drone, the, the what is it, the CG035 version, it seems to work really well. So we'll see. We'll just give it a try. And again, I, I am more about controlling myself. And on GPS mode, it seems to be a little bit easier for inexperienced flyers. I'm not going to be racing up and down, you know, a field. I'm just going to be flying very gentle and taking some video here and there. That's what I'm going to be doing. Most of the time with the, uh, the little toy one, I just go up and fly around in a circle. You know, let Nathan fly it. He knows how to, he knows how to kill it. You know, by pulling the two switch, the two uh, toggles, five o'clock and seven o'clock, it stops all the motors and the the drone just drops. But it only weighs about a hundred and 
80 grams and so he just falls out on the grass gently and so it's, it's a lot of fun he loves doing that and uh, he's got one from uh, that his dad bought from sharper image that is just junk i mean it's he probably paid way too much for it but it, it's kind of uncontrollable in a way uh, it doesn't really give you that that security that a, a beginner flyer needs or a kid needs especially a six-year-old you know he wants to take off he wants to go forward he wants to come back he knows what orientation is he knows that the camera little uh, pod that means that means front he knows that the battery compartment that looks like a little latch on a c-130 that means uh, back and of course left and right and y'all in either direction so he knows how to do that pretty well um so what i'm going to do is train him so that he can maybe land safely land and then just do the motor kill and you know he can at least come back within a couple of feet of where he took off and um because that that also has a return to home but it it doesn't work you know it doesn't really work so we'll see all right so donovan says uh spike 597 yes but there is a large amount of wet ink in the black sponge on the black on the black sponge under where the printhead goes back and forth so yeah that's the platen sponge so donovan please talk to me here okay we'll talk about this um that is the platen sponge the platen is where the paper goes under that and so when the printhead passes over say you were printing borderless the canon printers have strategically located sponges that's why you cannot print borderless in just any size you wish to print on especially si uh, sizes that you create yourself so most uh, greeting card stock is not a standard size because it comes open you're going to then fold it whether it has a pre um scored you know bend where you're going to bend it edge or not it's still going to be an odd size, like five and a half by nine inches or some some odd size like that. You're not going to be able to print borderless with that because those sponges are located at strategic locations for only the standard sizes that allow borderless printing. So what will happen is that the printer, regardless, as it travels across those sponges, the paper is advancing. When it lays ink on the paper, some of that ink is still vaporizing. I'm telling you, it's passing across so quickly that some of it you can scare. I don't know how it happens, but it happens. I never ever print borderless, and yet I also have that problem on my Pro 100, my Pro 10, my Pro 1000, my Pro 1. I have to go in there and blot. I have to go in there and blot regularly. Otherwise, eventually, I'm going to have a problem. Okay, so that's that's my take home message for you. Don't ignore it. It's exist, it exists. It is becoming worse. So nip it in the bud. You know, blot those areas out where you see any wet. Don't just look at it. Blot it. Clean it. Make it so that it's so clean you can touch it and nothing, you know, rubs on your finger. And that will be it. That will take care of that momentarily. You have to maintain it. If you're going to be printing nothing but greeting cards on that printer that is meant for 17 by 22 prints then you're going to have to do something you're going to have to maintain that printer and make sure that it is clean imagine if you're printing 17 by 22 that covers the whole width of your your printhead passage those sponges never ever ever get dirty because that's what you're doing you're doing what the printer is designed for it is designed for 17 inch wide that covers a whole head travel by 22 and hopefully it would be longer but you know we're tied to just the 17 by 22 and possibly even 17 by 25 when you start printing five inch wide stock that's when you're going to get lots of you know sponges getting dirty in that region because that's what the sponges are for they're supposed to catch stray ink all right So that's why I said, and I didn't want to sound, you know, insulting in any way, but 
you're printing small stuff on a printer designed for large prints, okay? Even if I was printing letter size prints, that's too small for that printer. If I'm going to do only letter size, I better get just a small printer to do that. Okay, one one design for just letter size, max paper. If I'm going to do 11 by 14, if I'm going to do 11 by 14 through 13 by 19, then I get an A3 printer, what they call A3 in Europe, uh, or a, a, a Pro 100, a Pro 10 that prints, uh, you know, from 4 by 6 to 13 by 19. If I only printed 4 by 6 in the Pro 100 or the Pro 10, I would have those problems too. Okay. So it's just something to think about. Those printers are designed to print as max as you can feed it. Okay. That's the best way. The best scenario is to print as large as the printer can handle. And you'll never have a problem with any dirt inside those sponges or on top or on the plate and plate itself or any such thing. Hard reality, my friend. That's what that's what the um, printer is is built to do. Okay. If of course they're going to allow you to do all sorts of other things, but they're laughing at you behind their backs. Okay. Yeah, they know they know what's happening. So, seventeen inch printer, print seventeen inch wide stock. That's why my Pro One, my P eight hundred is loaded always with seventeen inch wide stock. Okay, on a roll. Uh, Pro 1, I feed it nothing but 13 by whatever. Uh, Pro 10, the same thing. Pro 100, not so much. I don't care about that printer that much. In other words, I not that I don't care, but I can deal with the uh, any problems, any buildup of ink. I can clean that off. But the yeah, when I when I print nothing but 13 inch wide stock on my Pro 10, after I clean those areas, they never get dirty again. They never do. All right, Spike 597. Hello, in Washington, D.C. area, you may have a lot of no tams. Yeah, um, I'm not in Washington, D.C. I am actually outside. We have a lot of ball fields, a, um, lots of large open area playgrounds. My um, uh, brother, my son-in-law's sister's boyfriend has a property with like 15 acres of land. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm not going to fly in any kind of urban area here. Of course not. And again, my flights are like, you know, 10, 15 feet up in the air. That's about as high as I go because I'm still learning. So at some point, yeah, I have to look for special places to fly. I'm not going to do crazy things like fly in the streets, okay? Although I see a lot of videos about people flying in the streets and you can tell it's got to be like the Southwest, maybe Florida, by the style of the homes that you see. Yeah, it looks like exactly like Florida or maybe L.A. area. Um, Donovan says, Eli, that would be a bad, that would be bad for a leak. Um, I assume you're not having a leak, uh, but if a leak ever occurs, yeah, it would be all over the place. Not only those sponges. Sometimes a cartridge, um, if, especially if you've been refilling, which I don't think you are, um, not on the Pro 1000 anyway, on something like the uh, Pro 100, if you did the modification wrong and it begins to uh, leak because the uh, refill plug is not sealing properly, then yeah, you're going to have ink, but it's just going to be ink all over the surface of your prints. And not just underneath picking it up from the sponge. That's different. No, I don't think it's a leak. Ryan Leo says, uh, Nathan's coolest grandpa. I am. I am the coolest grandpa in existence. And you just ask Nathan. He'll tell you. That can cause problems. With the other half of the family, believe me, and it's, it's very touchy subject. Um, biggest mistake his mother did, our oldest daughter, she created a phone book for Nathan, and now that he's six, he's allowed to call 
certain people. He, if he either needs them, or I guess it's not so much of a mistake because he's supposed to call only when he needs us for something. But he's calling Grandpa. Grandpa, can you come over? Can we come over and can you come over and play? Can you bring the drone? Can we check the game camera? That's another thing. I bought a game camera. And since they have so much wildlife behind their house, I set it up in one of the trees looking at this path that I know all these animals are constantly traveling through. And right now it's been there for about since Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. So I will give it maybe till tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. We'll pick him up. I'm going to take a look at it maybe or just leave it for a complete week and get it Wednesday the second day of next week that we pick them up and see what we got. So far, in back of my house, I got two crazy little foxes just chasing each other, lots of deer, some raccoons, uh, lots of squirrels, birds, even spiders <laughs> that were on a tree branch that my camera was you know, facing. And yes, yeah, so it's pretty cool. And also a stray cat that keeps coming to the side door. But I had about 70 triggers that, that triggered videos. And so it should be a lot of fun. We'll check it out to see what we have on that. Um, but anyway, going back to the chat. Something to do with the... Also make, Jose, make sure that you register with the FAA since the drone seems above the size limit. Yeah, I may have to do that. Who knows? I'll look into that definitely. Uh, Ryan Leo says, Eli, I got the occasional gimbal issue, specifically, especially so when I am at high altitudes, it misses all my flights. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I have seen some really good, uh, oh man, my back and my hand, my hand end. Uh, I've been sitting here too long. Um, some of them that are controllable by you uh, tend to falter. What I have been seeing is in that, the earlier iteration of that, that particular drone, it came with a, a, a included a gimbal. But I think it was basically just two axes. And, excuse me, the problem was that when you set it to perfectly horizontal on takeoff, as soon as it got off, whoop, the camera would tilt. And you can adjust it all day long. You'd be more messing around with the gimbal adjustment on the little, they have a little toggle left and right, up and down switch. And then you would controlling the actual drone. So it became totally useless. So they did away with it. And of course, this became apparent to them, the manufacturers, the designers, as a result of um, channels that test all of these drones, getting back to them, giving them feedback. And so now this one doesn't have that. It just simply has that camera holder. And that, from the video that I have seen, as long as you use a camera that is not too heavy, and this one is not. We'll see. We'll test this one and see. I have many other little um, action cams that I can use. And some of them are, are lighter than others, especially the ones that don't have a rear uh, monitor. Why do you need a rear monitor for, you know, when you're flying? So... These also have Wi-Fi, so you can actually send directly to your phone using your app. So I'll test several of my cameras and see which one provides the best jiggle-free performance. You also get the so-called um, it's a shutter effect where you got kind of see waves like that. And so again, it depends on the camera. Uh, I like this one because it has. Um, stabilization built in it's supposed to be gyro but of course it's not it's digital and so we'll see we'll see what it does again i just want to first learn how to fly it and uh, make sure that i feel comfortable with it and then we'll jump over to other aspects of it and again eventually i just want to use uh, the camera to just shoot some videos and thing things like that and maybe make a couple of little montages and that sort of thing uh, it would be awesome to, uh, you know, do a circle around Nathan and he can be yelling at the, at the drone as it passes around him in a circle. That would be cool as hell. And, uh, I've seen shots. It can do, it can do the, um, hover over you and then the backwards zoom away type video. 
as well. And then it'll just stop after you set the distance. It'll stop where it is and then you can bring it down from there or bring it back to you. So it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of features for the price and uh, I would, you know, gladly pay the price for that. I told my wife that I was going to buy myself a uh, birthday present because I hadn't done it, you know. So um, she looked at me funny and I said, yeah, I, I got to buy myself a present. And so this will be something that will make me relax. And so, because I've been a pain in the you-know-what lately. I don't know why. I've been really, you know, fidgety and easy to trigger and that sort of thing. So I need I need to calm down. I need some yoga or some breathing and, and calm down a bit. But anyway, so it's going to be coming probably in about a week and a half. Uh, we'll be back from Florida. I should be nice and calm by then. You know, Orlando, Florida. Mickey Mouse Land. So that's what I'm all about right here. Oh, by the way, check out my Colonial Beach hat. Pick that up today. My other hats are so worn out already. I just need new hats. And so that's what I got today for um, the trip. So anyway. Um, Jose, can you show me in image, in QImage 1? Okay, I, have, I use a Mac. Let me see if I can. Let's switch over to, let's see, full desktop. We'll image Q, open QImage 1. I'm assuming that the UI is the same as it is on the Mac version. We should be able to see it. Actually, uh, I don't see it. Yeah, they don't have it yet. So, yeah, sorry, but they don't have it available yet. It would be, um, wait a minute. oh, here it is right here. Okay, so I know they put it in a different place. So let's go ahead and do some uh, five by sevens. So we'll do Nathan here. He's looking at his uh, Union Pacific. Um, whoa, wait a second. Sometimes you do get an error. Really weird. Here we go. Okay, so we have a five by seven here. But what I want to do, because what happens when you load an image, it's going to load it perfectly, whether you pick 5 by 7 or not. It's going to load it at whatever ratio it happens to be. What is it doing that for? Okay, let me go ahead and remove it. Let's create a, an actual size. So, let's see. Does it have... Oh, it doesn't. Oh. Boy, I wanted to make a custom size. So, I really cannot. Okay, doesn't have that feature just yet. So anyway, let's go ahead and load. Why are you doing that? Cannot open file. I'm not trying to use, I'm not trying to open any file. Gosh, what? Okay, something is wrong with the uh, program tonight. See that? Oh, well, I just updated this too. So I don't know. Maybe I'll uninstall it and reinstall it again from scratch. Yeah, something is wrong. Anyway, what you would do is, of course, just load the image. And then here, you will click on that button. And basically, it would be the same thing. Okay, it would load it uh, completely, regardless of the ratio, regardless of the proportions. And if you were to print, say, click on 5 by 7 it would then fit it inside that 5 by 7 so-called window without cropping. But if you turn auto cropping on, then it would crop it. It would make it zoom to fill, so to speak. So let's give it one more try to see if it'll work. No. Nope. Somehow when I go over here, see that? Let's try another. Maybe maybe this version has a lot of unsupported formats. I don't I didn't know that. Hmm. Let's try some downloaded images here. This is all new to me, folks. I uh, really don't use it that much. I have it installed here basically for information uh, if I ever get asked a question about it. But it looks to me like there's some problems, at least on my end, maybe. Okay, let's look at the viewer pictures. 
downloaded images. So these are open. Yeah, look at that. Cannot open. So what I'm going to have to do is um, basically do a um, reinstall. But anyway, there's, that's where you find it. You have to go to prints, and there's your little crop, do not crop scissors. But yeah, this is going to be a little project for me later on tonight. Hmm. Isn't that strange? Okay, let's see what else we got here. And then we'll go ahead and call it a night. I need to go upstairs and lay down. Um... Yeah, so I couldn't show you on my Q image because it's really acting up for some reason. Robert Smeltzer says, if you were to get a new program today like Q image, to like Q image whose? Um, no, I would only get Q image. There's really nothing else like it. And I really don't know, nor am I familiar with any other program. There are some programs out there, but uh, not like UImage. UImage is pretty unique <clears throat> in a good way and a bad way, too. Will it PixMap Pro 100 feet roll canvas? Yeah, if it's not too long. 25 inches is all you get. So you would cut it off 12 by 13 by 25 and feed it like I did on my video where I did a panorama. Check that out. Um, no, you cannot use rolls, Eli. That's correct. But you can also cut the paper. And you can manually feed it. I did that with a 13 by 26 piece of paper. And I created a uh, 12 and a half by 25, I think it was, panorama. With a half inch border all around. Or was it a quarter inch border or all around? Worked out pretty well. You just got to be really careful. I, it took a couple of loadings for me to get it right. Canvas would be a little bit more touchy. You got to have really, really um, right angle front edge to the side. Ryan Leo says, I'm glad I'm, I'm contributing via YouTube Premium. Thanks, YouTube, in incentive your content. Glad YouTube is incentivize your content, okay? I, I think I know what you mean, but uh, yeah, make sure that you watch uh, for at least almost the whole video. That's how they rate how much you get using uh, YouTube Red, which is YouTube YouTube Premium. So that's how they, uh, that's how your, your view generates income for the provider or the content provider. <clears throat> the less you watch, the less they make. Spike597 says, Jose, check out the website skyvector.com to see a map of draw tams to see the restricted air space for flying drone it is very large around the dc area i will do that let me put it here on a uh, notepad save it of course we'll change that to an actual dot com oh wait a second here r dot com okay Eli, yeah, there are also dozens of apps which you can download. So I think he's talking to apps for what? For flying? Is it very important to follow the rules? The FAA takes this very seriously. Yeah, of course it is. Um, and the guy with the um, Pro 1000... Apparently, they listen to me and go ahead and clean them. He's going to clean the printer now and make sure that you maintain it that way since apparently what type of printing you're doing is generating a lot of uh, extra ink on those sponges. 
Uh, Eli says, should I clean the sponge of my Pro 100 also? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you'll wonder, where the heck is that coming from? Yeah, just clean it. Clean it well. Um, the metal portion of it, of the whole complete plate and assembly, gets full of what looks like aerosolized ink. Just kind of, kind of, kind of a gray haze. You have to wipe that up as well. Just keep it as clean as you can. Reach in as far as you can without disrupting anything and keep everything clean. <clears throat> Eli says the uh, Pro 1000 study was posted on your Facebook group. Yeah. Okay. So that, that is it. That's where it is. Anyone who's interested, go in there and look. Again, it's a lot of information. I sat reading through that on my tablet and I just said, oh my God, I'm getting a headache. And so I stopped. But yeah, lots of information, lots of anecdotal information. In other words, I guess that means that he's actually done the testing and gotten the actual data. So, he also says, be careful with drones. I had an accident with an older drone, which weighed about four pounds. Oh, no. No, this doesn't weigh. Actually, it looks a lot sturdier than it is. It just weighs a few ounces. It's not even not even half a pound. Okay, it's not going to be that big, and it's not that big. It's actually look at my hands. It's actually the like that. It looks bigger in in in, in actual um, the pictures. It's not that big. It's about the it's about yay big. The box itself is only like this big, so it's not one of those drones that will go through a windshield and crack it. No, no, no. I would never get anything like that. Yeah, no, the, the props are not carbon fiber either. They'll still cut you, but they're not, you know, that type of a uh, propeller or rotor, if you will. All right, so Eli says, Jose, I just put my, put in my carts on, that are 100% PC ink, <clears throat> and I use your profile in QMH1 to produce the best and most accurate print I ever made. Putting it in a frame now. Did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? So this was a freebie that I gave away. Okay. And it's using Palo Duro soft, soft gloss rag, which is one of the finest Red River papers that they, that they sell. <clears throat> Just lovely stuff. I love these Palador etching even more, a little bit more. And um, the Red River profile used on the P800, which I'm running with OEM inks, produces stunning results. Stunning. Now, can I produce better results with my profile? I'm not sure. I would have to try it. And even if physically it's a little bit better, it may not show up visually as being better. Like... It may not be so much better than you actually see a difference in rendition. So, you know, if it's not broken, right? So I'm going to leave it as that. That combination is producing fantastic results. So I am now running Palo Duro Satin, which it looks like like a regular round resin coated paper. Like a, like a Canon Pro Luster or Canon Semi Gloss. Actually, closer to a Semi Gloss. Now, their particular Red River profile is producing slightly dark results. Perfect color, linear, but just a little bit darker than it should be. So, I'm going to be forced to make a profile and that will bring it back up to correctness. So, again, you get lucky, it will work perfectly. If not, a custom profile will get you there. Unless it's so far off that, you know, a custom profile is not going to do you that much good. A custom profile can only bring you in so much to perfection. It's not going to create miracles. It's not going to perform miracles. It's going to bring you in a little bit better than you were before. But not, it's not going to be such a dramatic change. Now, in this case, apparently Eli is loving it. I'm glad. So... For those of you who need profiles, there is your testimonial right there. Okay. 
there it is and let me show you let me go back to me like i was saying you didn't see me do my hand gesture see you were looking at the chat so eli downloaded that from my my facebook group i made that the other night i tried to make it during my last live stream and it was a failure because the print had a fault on it the print of the chart had a fault on it and so it wasn't readable by the i1 pro 2 so i reprinted it recreated it tested it and boom it was fantastic so i went ahead and uploaded it for free at the facebook group now your requirements would be pro 100 precision color sync set red river palo duro soft gloss rag and of course that profile and if you meet those four requirements you're going to get ridiculously good results. So say, for instance, you have a paper printer ink combination and you look everywhere and of course there's no profile for it. Who in their right mind would publish a profile like that for free? No one. So in that case, what I can do for you is to create a custom profile. Now you would do your own printing of those charts. And in my site that's available in the description of all my regular videos you go there you download the files that you need to print you download from a certain site some software that you will need or if you have QImage you can use QImage because it has the ability to print profile charts unadulterated in other words it's not going to affect them like Photoshop will like Lightroom will so you need a software that will not affect that file you cannot change it in any way you cannot assign a color space to it you have to print it raw the printer driver has also to, has to be set at no color management or no color matching done open print okay and then once those prints are dried you put them in an envelope interleave some paper between them and you send them to me and I will create a profile for you. Hopefully they will all be able to be scanned perfectly and not like I had that problem the other day. So once that is done, your profile is then created by the software. If I happen to have that printer, ink, and paper combination in-house, I will test it for you before I email you back the profile. And the results should be as close to perfect as possible. You will be paying $30 per profile. Actually, you get a cut. The more profiles you order, up to three, I think I give you quite a cut. Normally, it's $25 each, but because I'm doing it, $25 to $30 each is what most people charge. So, I will be better than the rest because I will interact with you, okay? Unlike those other companies. So, I will print a test if I have that paper in configuration available and of course driver and then i will if i'm satisfied then you will be satisfied so then i will email you the the uh, profile and then you can also get a uh, gamut uh, bubble if you will of it and so you can see what the overall gamut is and uh, that's it you will get finally like eli just found out he's getting the best prints with palo duro soft gloss rag on his pa100 Pro 800, no, Pro 100, not the 800. Pro 100 and, of course, Precision Color Sync Set. So, if he's happy, I'm sure every one of you would also be happy. So, take that into consideration. That will save you. Ask him right now, having that profile, as opposed to before when he did not have it. Ask him how he feels now. Just go ahead and ask him right here. Let's ask you right now, Eli, your last entry before I go off the air. Please tell everybody here. And just because I know you kind of, you're my friend and all of that, forget about that. You're a perfect stranger to me now. Go ahead and post what you feel happened once you got that profile compared to when you did not have that profile. I'm going to go ahead and read some of the other comments while I give you a chance to uh, write down whatever you wish to write. Art. Tech in E eighth. Okay, that's a long one. I know that is. That's Art. That's my friend Art. Hi everyone from Tennessee. Just got home 
from church. I hope everything, everybody is doing well. Well, our, we are about to go off the air. I'm waiting for a remark from our friend, um, Eli. So, you know, you'll be able to catch this later on, I hope. Um, glad to see you. Eli says, talking about drones now. Oh, yeah, Art is here. The other drone man. So should I show Art what I'm getting? Uh, maybe not. I, I really want to, I really need to go upstairs right now. It's now about three and a half hours. So I knew that was going to happen. Okay, Cole Frischu, would you recommend buying used printers? What's the best way to get an expensive Canon Pro 1000? No, I would not recommend, excuse me, buying a used printer. Now, the Pro 1000, i tell you, it would have to be no more than $500 and maybe not have more than 100 pieces of paper run through it. Okay, um, no, I... I I have to admit that I have bought my share of used printers, but that was simply to have particular models of printers here for me to test and being able to answer questions and produce videos, you know, pertaining to certain printers. But if I was buying them for my personal use, no, I would not, especially printers that have internal ink pads. The Pro 1000 does not, but, you know, other printer models do. And so when the say a Canon Pro 10 ink pads go wet, completely wet, saturated. That said, you just throw it out. There's, there's no point in having a service. It costs too much. And so you never know how much media has passed through that printer. You don't know how much ink has been wasted already during cleaning cycles, The especially the automated ones from Canons. So you never know. So it's not a good idea. Unless you're there... And you can actually test the printer at the person's home and check and make sure that, you know, you can run a, um, a uh, print, uh, like a detailed uh, report on how many pages the printer has consumed, so to speak. And if you can do that and it still sounds and looks good, then sure, try it and see. The price has to be just right, though. Mr. J, did you get my email about resolving how to reset the counter for my Epson Workforce 1100 ink pad service life? Um, did you, does the WIC tool work on that? Because I am not even sure I have, let me take a quick look, my friend. I'm not sure whether I do have the uh, tool for that. Let's see. Do I even have them here? I may have them on another drive. Yeah, I don't have them here with me. I will look and see what I have as far as the uh, adjustment tools. I may have it. Again, I can't, I can't remember right now, and I don't have it here on my documents. So there's the adjustment tool, and of course, then there's the... Um, Wick reset, which may work or may not work. I don't know. Let's look at it. Let's look at Wick. I have it here somewhere. Give it a quick look here. So here, here's the Wick tool that I'm gonna go ahead and put you on uh, full view here. Here's the Wick tool. Yeah, I have the um, adjustment programs elsewhere. The reason being is because they are they are seen by the uh, security systems as as bad because they are basically hacks. Okay, so here's the Epson Workforce 1100. Yeah, you can use it. You can use the WIC. It'll cost you ten bucks to use. So download the WIC reset tool, and then uh, it'll see your program right here. I can see um, read the waste waste encounters. So I am a 35.35 on one of the counters and 29.65 on the other one. And of course you would the uh, you would be doing the uh, reset. You would have to insert the serial number you buy and you do that here by buy reset key. 
And again, that will set it up. But, but the thing is, you already have a saturator pad or near saturator pad. So, you know, you got to do something to divert that ink. And unfortunately, I have no idea how to get to that uh, hose on the 1100. Most of the other Epsons are rather easy to get to. I'm not sure how to do that. So you can continue printing and at some point it's going to start overflowing. That's what it's going to do. So yeah, I have not found any instructions. You might go to octoinkjet dot octo like October octoinkjet dot co dot uk. They sell also resetting systems and external ink catchers. It's in the UK. So go there, search for the Workforce 1100 and see whether they have instructions on how to divert the uh, inks from that printer. Now on mine, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to soon put that printer out of service. It's acting up other reasons. And I'm going to then do my R3000 as a sublimation printer. So I'm going to give up on, on that one, on the Workforce 1100. I've had it forever. So I bought it uh, basically refurbished for 99 bucks way back. And I gave it to my daughter and she used it and, you know, let it clog and all of that. I took it back from her. And now I'm using it as a sublimation printer since it only has four colors to deal with. All right. So you can reset it is what I'm trying to say. But Again, you got to be careful because those pads are already uh, declared saturated. They're not going to be completely saturated. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, they can probably go another cycle before they'll actually overflow. But I would be thinking very carefully about putting that uh, printer like over a big tray or something. Just in case, okay? Just in case it starts to leak. But it's going to take some while before it does that. All right, Eli says, I don't know, Cole, but it seems like printers would be a risky thing to buy used. Yeah, I've done it before. Um, lately, I will not recommend doing it simply because you just don't know, uh, especially as popular as the, as the uh, new Canon printers are, the newer Canon printers are, the 100, the 10, the 1, they all have internal ink pads. What you don't want to do is get a printer that's already almost nearing that point. And again... Why? You know, you're going to end up throwing it, at, throwing it out unless you get it for like $50 and you don't mind spending $300 to get it uh, reset with new pads and all of that. Spike5970 says to Cole, I don't think there is an inexpensive Canon Pro 1000. Actually, if I told you what I pay for mine used, you would scream. So I got it from a warehouse. Where they got them from, I have no clue, nor do I care. They had six of them. They all went on eBay one at a time bidding. And I happened to win this particular one. I failed with others, but I won this one for six. And that plus I'd be, what was it, like 60 something dollars shipping from Kentucky or Missouri, someplace like that, out in the uh, central part of the country. So, got really lucky with that one. Yeah, um, art, I researched online and I found paid software that is downloadable from Asia. But don't know if I can trust them. Yeah, you, you, it, they're trustable. It's just that they act like cracks. They act like, you know, um, hacks. So when you get them, because they're meant only to be used by technicians and they have to log on to a service with a logon key. So when you get these cracked ones, they disable that function. They disable that requirement. So they will be seen by your antivirus as bad. And some of them are actually bad. But, you know, the fact is that most of them are not. 
But anyway, I got a bunch of them. Let me look and see if I have it. I probably do not, but let me see if I have it. Otherwise, the wick tool, 10 bucks is all it is, man. You'll get that printer back to work, okay? So consider doing that. It'll be done now, right now. So if you do that, just insert that key in there. It'll reset back to zero. Your printer will be back to life again. But keep in mind that you got to find a way to divert those inclines out of the printer onto a bottle or something because eventually it will overflow. Mike Cheney is here. A little late, my friend, but I'm happy to have you. We're about to go off. Um, yeah, uh, you saw what I did. I had a problem with QImage. It looks like QImage is being denied access to image files. Now, that's exactly what happens. Let's see. QImage opens files to read X EXIF info when you roll the mouse over thumbs and when you try to add a print. So you updated your antivirus software. Well, I'm on Windows uh, 10. It does that automatically. I don't know what could I do. Now, QImage regular is working. I just did that earlier. So QImage Ultimate is working fine. Just QImage 1 is not. I recently updated the new to the new version and um, so I, I don't know why QImage 1 is doing it and QImage Ultimate is not doing it. Eli says, man, this print looks great. It is up on my wall already. How about if you take a picture of it and then pop it on the Facebook group and then explain what it is that you did You'll be helping me a lot because I want people to realize that buying a profile from me is not to be considered a risk, okay? But a, what would you, what word would you use? An investment, I guess? Yeah. Imagine having something, a little minuscule file that lives in your computer that you access when you're printing images through your calibrator monitor using a particular paper and ink and a particular paper. And you can bet your you-know-what that when you hit print, you can go to the bathroom, take care of business, you can go upstairs and get some coffee or whatever, go outside, look out the window for a while, come back, and you will see that print emerging and you'll have to sit down because you'll be in shock as to how beautiful that looks. That would help a lot. You know, that would help a lot because that will take away any kind of, uh, you know, fear people may have in, in, you know, investing $30 on a profile that will then eliminate any problems, any kind of, you know, what you see is what you get problems. So that would help. Please do that for me, Eli. Put it on the Facebook group. Take a picture of it and upload it and let people know what it is you're, you're printing with. And again, in this case, it was the freebie. Remember, we were considering, you were considering buying a profile for me. And I decided, wait a minute, I have that same printer running with the inks that you're asking about. And I do have that paper. So I'll just throw it at the world for free. Well, I can't do that all the time, right? I got to make some money so I can maintain doing what I do. Art says, no worries, Mr. J. I'll catch up later and see if I can put my two cents about your drone. So, yeah, it is... Um, Seems to be a pretty good one. I'm going to get it for basically nothing. They've offered it to me. They think I'm a, a drone a drone channel, but I'm not. But maybe I will start a new channel concerning drones. Who knows? Usually, you know, when I when I take on a new field, I learn the crap out of it. Okay, I do, I do. That's my goal. Whether it's printing, whether it's sublimation, whether it is my miniatures that I used to build that I still do. In micro machining on metal with lathes and milling machines, in miniature making steam engines that operate, all of that stuff I learned on my own. I did my own research, and I got to the point where I could be considered an expert on it. So that's that's my nature. I go crazy over subjects, compulsiveness you might call it, that can be bad and good. Depends how you apply it. So. 
Anyway, thank you, Eli, for making sure that this group at least heard your uh, little testimonial. We have 21 people still with us here, which is amazing. I'm going to go ahead and finish real quick here. And um, uh, Mike Cheney, what should I do? Should I un uninstall QMH1 and reinstall it? I don't use it hardly at all. Uh, I use QMH Ultimate, which is my to-go program. So, again, if, it, if it's something that may be being caused by, you know, Windows 10 security, I don't think it is. I don't think it should be um, because it allows QMH Ultimate to do whatever it wants. So, let me know real quick if you get a chance here before I say goodnight to everybody. Let me switch over to full, full me. All right, so let's quick read the last few. Eli says, before I had the profile, I was printing more than three to four prints until I got one that matched my monitor well enough. This was my first print using 100% PC inks, and it matches the monitor exactly. So not only do you have a well-calibrated uh, monitor, because remember, on my end, I'm using my monitor, which is calibrated as well. So apparently, what you see is what you're getting. We see wig. That's what they call it. And that is the goal. That is the goal here, folks. So why would you waste time and money? This is where contributing to the channel comes in. I saved you X amount of money. Look at all the time you guys wasted printing. You know, that's when you go to, you know, my my uh, um, PayPal button on my channel and throw in a few bucks to the channel. That's how you do that. That way I feel encouraged to continue doing what I'm doing. And again, if I have to rely on just the videos and what they generate, I might as well close down the channel because it's just not providing anything. And I'm not. I wish I was independently wealthy. I could do this from the bottom of my heart as I do anyway. But there's no way that I would be able to do that. So you can consider doing that. Patreon is another Patreon. It's another uh, venue that you can use. Uh, it's a monthly donation, just a few bucks, whatever you can afford to do. Uh, of course, watch the you know what's before the video, and um, consider doing the super chat during the live stream. I only got one tonight out of three and a half hours. So again. Not good. But anyway, I appreciate the time that you guys have spent with me. And so let me quickly, very quickly go through this here and see what we have. Eli, just send me an image or, uh, email. Okay, I'll take a look at that when we go off the air. Where can I download that software? Well, you can get it from octoinkjet.co.uk. Octo inkjet.co.uk okay or you can look for we wic tool or reset tool one of those one of those search criteria in google and you will get directly to the site but octo inkjet is a good friend of mine from the uk he has a third party ink and cartridge store that he manages from his home as well and so he's very reliable. He can actually provide you with the software and sell you the keys because he works directly with the originator of this system. Yeah, post it on uh, Facebook, please, Eli. Mike sees Mike Cheney says for Q1, I would recommend disabling your antivirus temporarily to see if that is it. If that works, maybe you'll have to put in an exception in the AVs, the auto ant antivirus software. Well, I'm not running a specific antivirus software. I'm running um, whatever uh, Windows 10 uses. You know, the uh, the uh, Windows um, security, whatever the heck it's called. So I'll see if I can do that there. If not, I'll just uninstall it. But, you know, again, I'm not having any problems with uh, Ultimate. And of course, he says it wouldn't hurt to try uninstalling it either. There's already, there's really no downside to doing that. Yeah, I'll do that and see what happens. 
By the way, I would recommend to everyone that doesn't have their own profiling tool to invest in a profile from Jose. He's someone who knows what he is doing that you know I'll be, it'll be a good product. Thank you for that, Mike. Appreciate that. The word just needs to get around from those of you who have already tried one of my profiles. They're good. I wouldn't be using them myself if they were not, okay? So that is the case. Thank you again so much. We're heading out to Disney World on Thursday. We're going to first, as soon as we land, we're going to get our car and visit my mom. We'll bring Nathan to her. She's going to have to touch him because she cannot see any longer. And so that's going to be wonderful. We'll spend a few, a few hours with her. We'll head on down to the resort and check in. We're going to be going to the not-so-scary Halloween party. That's really for kids, but you know what? I'm going to be partying like a maniac there that night as well. And again, then we hit the sack. Then the next day, we'll either go back to see mom or go to Magic, not Magic Kingdom, but Animal Kingdom. It'll either be Friday or Saturday. Anyway, we'll be coming back Sunday. I'll be tired as you can be. And so I'll try to do a live stream next Sunday. If not, if you don't see a schedule, I'm going to pre-schedule it. But if you don't see it, uh, that's because I decided not to do it. But we'll have a whole bunch of videos coming up for the following week. I should have something for Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Maybe even, well, no, for tomorrow. Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm losing track of time here. But anyway, so hopefully you'll have something to deal with. I'm going to try to record several videos so that while I am away, I'll schedule them so that they'll be at a certain time every day for the next five or so days. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Let me read what else is here. Ah, thank you, Art. Yeah, we'll have a great trip. I hope so. I hope nothing happens. But uh, usually, you know, you have little glitches with airlines and things like that. Hope everything goes smooth. Omar Gonzalez says, Thank you, Don Jose, for all your time. Well, thank you again, Don Omar. Okay, bye-bye, everyone.